Ready to the Hook on Woodward Sports Network, Detroit's all digital sports network, live from my bookie studios. It is Thursday, July 29th. I'm your girl, Pilar Laster. Like always, I'm alongside D Mac, Tom Mazaway. We've got Fish in the Fishbowl. Andrew Manning, all of our social media, so make sure that you hit us up on all of our socials at Woodward Sport across Sports across the board. Um, join in on all the conversations. And guys, make sure that you are also downloading our app. You can find it in the Android store. You can find it in the Apple store. Like it, share it, tell your friends about it, leave some great comments, uh, entice other people to want to check us out. And of course, we've got Alex keeping us honest behind the glass. Uh, fighting with everybody in the studio today. A little feisty Alex. Feisty, feisty. Goes according to plan. Right. There you are. Right. Fighting with you everybody. You always catch the end of what you say. <laughs> 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 uh, hey, Maz, right. I saw you in the opener. You did? How yeah. long? Yeah. Like, I almost. Like a split if you second. Blink, well, I blinked, if you blink, and then I you saw. Miss it. You good. miss it. Maz is yeah, here. you've always been in the opener. I don't know why not you any, said No, not anymore. Yes, you're always in the opener. If you okay. play the opener, you're but, there. You're not there for very long, but you're there. <laughs> So, all right, guys. Fish. Well, as you can tell, we're here to Good have times. some fun today. Um, so, and also make sure that you guys check out our draft party tonight. Uh, what are the details to Imagine Theater, the, Novi? Imagine, no, I think they're in Royal Oak. Oh, Royal Oak. Oh, we're Royal, Royal Oak. Yeah, yeah they it's moved. Royal Oak. I'm they at, moved from Novi to Royal Oak. I don't think they ever moved. I think it was always no. It was Royal, Royal, Novi. Well, no, it was not fish. Trust me. Um, well, the, Sign has said Royal Oak for years. So. All right. Oh. For years. We just did it a day ago. But yes. okay. All right, Tom Maslow. Hit us with your story. Join us, 730 date. tonight in Royal Oak. Uh, how about it? Tickets Brought to you by mybookie.ag, mybookie.com. Use the promo code Woodward. They'll match your first deposit halfway up to $1,000. You can bet on the NBA draft tonight because that's our lead story. And, of course, you heard Pilar. We have a draft watch party tonight at the Imagine in Royal Oak. So uh, come on out and see us starting at 730. Pistons are on the clock, folks. It's here, the big day from Brooklyn. Cade Cunningham, the consensus number one pick. Matter of fact, Adrian Wojnarowski puts out a, a tweet about an hour ago saying, yeah, Pistons are going to take Cade Cunningham. To which I replied to him, no the, kidding, Woj. No quitting. Al May. Our own Al May. Yeah, our own Al May in the booth. Yeah. Alex he, Mayer could have broke that. Break news. it down, break it down, Alex, because you even said, right? Yeah, so um the Pistons, they have the number one overall pick tonight, which means they get to pick first. Nice. So they have they can pick from any of the prospects that have entered the NBA draft. So therefore they're probably gonna take the best player, uh -huh. and the best player is uh, some guy named Cade Cunningham. So, yes. according to Wojnarowski, that uh, that will be the pick tonight. But you knew this before, right? Right, right. because yes. coming up on the Woodward Sports Network, yes, everyone can tune into our YouTube channel page uh, this Saturday for a special edition of the Short Report, my video series that runs every Friday on uh, well, or Saturday in this case. And this week is going to be on Cade Cunningham because, you know, I was so confident the Pistons were going to select Cade that I started making this video on Monday. So boy. you can all thank me. Well, that's the young man's way in you. Duh. Uh, did you name your report after Zach Short? Uh, no, okay. but I, I Which, think I will make a, a short report on okay. him very shortly. But I think, shortly. Uh, Alex, to your point, though, it's brilliance because the short report would get me to tune in because uh, short. whatever is it, it is, it's going to yeah. be short and to the point. Don't right. you think Alex's quickie would have been qu better? No. A better name? Alex is quick. Listen, we're talking about work here, Maz. Oh I don't care what the gosh. kid does on his personal I'm time. I'm naming my segments. The Short Report and Alex's Edition. They, they all got a ring to them. They all make sense. I think I, na I named Alex's Edition. By the way, congratulations Confirmed. to uh, Woodward Sports <laughs> Network. We have our first television in, in the studio. Yes. yes. We're watching We've been Bonnie on Ball. since like November, but we have our TV in the studio working live today, and we're watching the Olympics, of course. But what, small. What, what's what, on what the Olympics? What exactly are By, we watching? Hey. Body ball? It just Beach so volleyball to be on, happened to be on CBC. Hey, Maz, I'm so happy you're such an astute Olympic uh, watcher, no matter what it is, equal opportunity lender. Absolutely. You could break down the Swiss, Canada, women's, I what could? was going to happen right there. Um, it was awesome. Thank the you for six being foot here. Five blonde. What really, that, happened, oh, yes. for what really happened was that Tom Mazaway was throwing a fit because our show is on while <laughs> the Olympics women's volleyball was taking place and he threw a fit 
And it worked. And it worked. And now we're watching the Olympic. Well, <laughs> you guys are tournament. lucky, or in your case, not lucky. It was on the HSN network, and I changed it, finding something else, and I Appreciate found it. the Olympics. What is the HSN network? Home, uh, shopping, home, network. Shopping, home network. shopping network. Home shopping network. Yeah, it's wow. like, here, you can buy this thing for twenty nine ninety nine. You know, oh, if you call now, you can get two for the price of one, and it? you get a hair dryer. Just what like you, you Alex. You got your, your name is Al May, your nickname, named after a lotion. Of course. No, it's not. Not. It's not That's because you're that so is. soft. That's they what it matters. That you're home shopping so network. mean. Max, continue the update. Please. I will. Tiger started a seven-game home stand later tonight, and Mac will be there. I'll be there with, about the, it. with the prospects. Last place Orioles in town for four. Casey Mize gets the ball. Tell us about what you're going to do tonight, Mac. I'm, uh, so all the young prospects that were drafted in, I'm going to go down and scare the shit out of them. No, and we're going to go. Me and Dave Rosemary are going to go and use them for a minute. going to give them a nuggie. We're going to go watch Casey Mize, hopefully. What suite number are you going to be in? Uh, I don't know. Make sure you text me. I will. Okay. Why? Are you going to be down there? You never know. You never know. You never know. I know where Maz will be. <laughs> you do too. Champions Club Buffet. Tigers <laughs> took two of three from the Twins. If we had this TV yesterday, we would have been going nuts. 17-14 to 14 the final yesterday. They give up seven home runs to the Tigers and win the game. They hit, they hit none of their own. First time a team has scored 17 runs and not hit a home run of their own. First time since 1961 that's happened here in Detroit. How about that? That's 60 years. Jamer Candelario, <laughs> Eric Haas, yeah, each nicked in three. Tigers assure themselves of at least a 500 finish in July if they win a couple of games here against the Orioles. That will be three straight winning months, and that's good here. By the way, MLB trade deadline tomorrow, 4 o'clock. Teams making moves already. The Brewers grab Eduardo Escobar, the all-star from Arizona. Yankees trading for Texas stud lefty hitting Joey Gallo. Let's play a little Joey Gallo. They talked to him. Just, I don't know, the Yankees were playing Texas, and I think somebody asked him, were you a Yankee fan growing up? I mean, for me, it was Derek Jeter. Uh, not even, not, it wasn't even close. Uh, you know, for me, Derek Jeter was just uh, an idol for me. And, uh yeah. Well, my family grew up in New York, so I, I grew up a New York sports fan and everything. Yankees, Giants, Knicks, uh, Rangers for hockey, so uh, diehard Yankee fan. I have a new favorite Yankee, and his name is Joey That's because he's Gallo. a left-handed hitter, and he's going to hit pop flies into the seats and right field. And he likes Jeets. Oh, he loves Jeets. Yeah. His, he probably named his dog Jeets, too. He, he might, might love Jeets more than you. No. No. I <laughs> feel like, yeah, Jeter's a very popular name for dogs. Really? Is it? Mm-hmm. I've got multiple uh, friends that have named their dogs. Believe me, Jeter. I named my dog first before. They did. <laughs> yeah, I've never heard of a dog named Jeter. Because you're older than all of us, so. <laughs> I'm the biggest. By the way, day two of training camp for the Lions. We're going to have plenty of sound. Corey Woods was out there today. They open up the preseason August 13th at home against Buffalo. Uh, how about Zach Wilson? He finally signs his deal. How about the Jets' him? number one pick in Big Green. Four years, $35.1 million. He gets 229 up front. Welcome to Gang Green, kid, and God bless you. <laughs> Tokyo Olympics, no Simone Biles, no problem for Team USA Gymnastics. Soon E. Lee, I love that name. She wins the gold in the women's all around. She comes the fifth straight American woman to claim the Olympic title. Check her out. What is she, 17 years old? On her way to Auburn University. And how about those swimmers? My main man, Andrew, out there. He's a swimmer. Talk to him in a minute. <laughs> Caleb Dressel, Bobby Fink, both bring home the gold. Katie Ledecky, Almost pulled it off for the women's 4 by 200 relay team. She was closing like secretariat, Mac. She just <laughs> got nipped never at the closed. I know he didn't. I should have said American <laughs> That was Farrell. a brutal one. I should have said so American Family. Yes. Well, he used to close when he was a kid. Oh, okay. He was a kid. Yeah, okay, yeah. Anyway, the U.S. leads the medal count with 37, 13 of them gold. And on this day in sports, before we get to the great Mark Kestisher, live from New York, of course, he is hosting the NBA draft tonight on ESPN Radio. We take you back to 1991, the great El Presidente, Dennis Martinez with the Perfecto. One and two pitch. In the air, center field, Grissom. El Presidente, El Perfecto. 
<laughs> look at the Look at, those great, look at look those great at Expo uniforms. Those great Expo unis. Isn't that sweet? We were I just used to talking love, about their logo. I used to love Dennis Martinez, man. He was he was the goods. Yeah, he good. was the goods. He was good the goods. stuff there. <laughs> All right, guys. When we come back, it is time for us to get to our big hook of the day, and you do not want to miss this. You've heard this guy on ESPN um, NBA Radio doing the play-by-play. He's covered college hoops. He's covered a lot of Cade Cunningham's mm-hmm. games, so you don't want to miss this. We've got Mark Kestisher joining us up next. So nobody go anywhere. You're tuning into The Hook on Woodward Sports Network. Start a career in an industry that is always essential, the heating and cooling industry. Learn more today by visiting northwesterntech.edu. Welcome back to The Hook on Woodward Sports Network. Tom Azoway alongside Pilar Lastra and the four-time Stanley Cup champion, Darren McCarty, in his Tiger jersey today because he's going to to watch the Tigers whip up on the Orioles. But the big story of the day, of course, the happiest place to be as a sports fan today is Detroit. Yes. Michigan, USA, because the Pistons have the f- number one pick in the NBA draft for the first time since 1970. That's right. They took the dauber, Bob Lanier, out of St. Bonaventure back in 1970. For more on the draft, the man will be covering it. One of my favorites. I stay in the car just to listen to this guy do the I game. I do too, bro. Mark Kestisher. Kesty joins us from Brooklyn, USA. What's up, Kesty? Very, very kind of you guys uh, to mention that. And I just hope, as a guy who lives in Connecticut and looks for direct flights, that <laughs> Delta flight to Detroit, if we can get the Pistons back on the national schedule, I'm all oh, about that. I can't wait, man. I, it's been a long time, Kesty. 2004 was a hell of a team. They had a great run, all those Eastern Conference finals. But it's about time we see that Piston red, white, and blue back out in front. No, I agree with you. That was actually my first finals that I covered was that 2004. Uh, me and, uh, well, I was much younger then, still didn't have hair, but Tim Legler <laughs> was my uh, analyst, nice. and I think it was Brent Musburger and Woo! Dr. Jack Ramsey. That oh. was uh, one heck of a way to break in for me. Dr. Jack, did you take any of his uh, suit jackets, any of his leisure suits? <laughs> <laughs> I, have a, I still have a pin. Uh, it's a Dr. Jack 77 pin oh. uh, that the Portland Trailblazers put out uh, after his awesome. passing. And it has that great 70s kind of uh, sport coat look, little design. Uh, great man. And you know what my fondest memory, I'm getting you way off track here. No, you're Working not. with Bren, um, I said, let's go to a Tigers game. It was an off day in the finals. And I forget who it was, but somebody had tickets for us. We had to go to a radio station to get them. And one of the caveats was, will Brent talk Michigan football for a few minutes? <laughs> and Brent said, not the first time I sang for my supper. So he went in there, <laughs> he got the tickets. Then he wanted to go into the press box. And I'm like, well, we don't have a credential. And he goes, ah, just follow me. Uh, he looks in. The gentleman at the press box did not want to let us in because we didn't have credentials. I know and who Dave it is. Dave Dombrowski. That's Jerry. Dave Dombrowski. <laughs> then, yeah, you're right. And he was doing his job. And Dave yep. Dombrowski, uh, then uh, president and GM, sees Brent out of the corner of his eye. Next thing I know, we're in the president's suite uh, watching oh, the game. Oh, man. So it, was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Great memories. That's awesome. Mark Kestisher, ESPN Radio, mm-hmm. covering the NBA draft tonight. Got a pretty good crowd with you tonight. PJ Carlissimo, Seth Greenberg, Ramona Shelburne. The festivities start at 7 from the Barclays Center. What can you tell us about this great, great player that the Pistons are going to get in Cade Cunningham? Yeah, I I, I did uh, one of his late season games. It was an overtime game. I think it was against Oklahoma. I'm forgetting already. And then a couple of his uh, Big 12 uh, tournament games, uh, the win over Baylor, and then uh, they lost uh, heading in toward the Big 12 championship game. But he's, look, he's a guy that is prototypical NBA, right? He's got the size. He's 6'8". He's multi-positional. He can be a point guard at that size, which is a huge advantage. He can score inside, mid-range, three-point line. Um, He's just a guy that everyone has seen on the radar for the last couple of years. And look, we only get to see these guys for one year at the college level. Uh, You know, 
he, he's, he's shown enough, obviously, to the Pistons in what's a very good top five or six that he's the guy. And, you know, we saw last year number three turned out to be the rookie of the year. I mean, it's, right. it's a little bit of a crapshoot, but it feels a little less than that uh, with Cade uh, Cunningham and certainly with a needed point guard in Detroit. We're talking to Mark Kestesher, ESPN NBA radio play-by-play announcer. And my question to you, obviously with the young talent that Dwayne Casey and Troy Weaver have assimilated here in Detroit with the Sadiq Bays, the Jeremy Grants, um, now that Kate Cunningham comes in there. As Pistons fans, what is expectations for us? Should we expect that this team should be able to make it into the playoffs in the East? That's a great question. I mean, they did a great job last year uh, with two trades in the first round. Bay, you mentioned, Isaiah Stewart also coming over. Uh, we didn't really get to see, you know, the full Killian Hayes experience. You mentioned Jeremy Grant, huge pick. And then you had a ga- guy like Kate Cunningham. I kind of think of it in my mind this year, a, a recent example would be the Atlanta Hawks, where they keep adding talent every year being in the lottery. And then you wondered, when would they make that move and it didn't come right away so in the eastern conference maybe it's a little easier to sneak in now we have the play in tournaments so you're talking nine and ten seed as well that kind of throws a couple extra spots in there to maybe get toward the postseason i think you have to keep expectations at a decent level and look what atlanta did this year they took that huge leap Phoenix Suns obviously added chris paul and that was tremendous but they had a lot of young talent that's in their third year this year and then made this incredible run to the NBA Finals. So I don't want to, you know, get folks too excited and say it's a guaranteed playoffs this year, but they're going to compete. Uh, you've got the 9 and 10 at play, and then again, let it marinate a little bit. Uh, maybe, you know, you attract a, a, a veteran as well who could be the missing piece, and then you're right back uh, in the hunt in the postseason. Well, I think you made a great point there for us fans, and you said Atlanta is a comparable, and for me, that's a team you don't want to play against. So if they establish that work ethic and things like that. So who does Mark Kestesher, if Kay Cunningham uh, was announced going number one, who do, who goes number two? Is there a sure, it's, sure cut two? Yeah, I, I feel it's going to be Jalen Green. I did a couple of G League games this year. Uh, He's a guy who skipped college. Uh, I'm sure you all are familiar with G League Ignite, which, you know, they didn't get the full experience this year because of the pandemic and playing in a bubble situation at Disney for about 15 or 16 games. But these are guys that got paid. Uh, Jalen Green got the maximum, I believe, about a half million dollars, uh, you know, to go right from high school into this pro situation, play with veterans, play against veterans, be coached by Brian Shaw, who has NBA experience and obviously uh, played as well at a high level. So I I think it's, you know, it's just about a lock that he would go to the Houston Rockets at number two. But, you know, it was funny, we brought up PJ and he was in Seattle when Greg Oden went number one to Portland. I don't think it's the same situation, but sometimes it's, it's better to be the number two, you know, if you're in Houston's position and say, well, maybe the, the team at one messes it up. Remember Boston <laughs> traded out to the number three spot and ended up, you know, with a, a really good pick a couple of years ago when Markel Fultz went number one oh. uh, to uh, Philadelphia. So sometimes being in that position takes <sighs> one away and that. forces you to make another pick. But yeah, Jalen Green, I think, is just about a virtual lock to go number two. There's no Sam Bowie versus Michael Jordan this year. I mean, <laughs> are we safe to say that at least? I I think so. You know, it's interesting if you're in Toronto. And, uh, and that's, you know, pretty close to you guys. And you're sitting at number four, and Kyle Lowry's career is almost over. Like, I think they're in a great spot to pick up uh, the kid from Gonzaga, Jalen Suggs, oh, yeah. who I think is a terrific player. and is gonna, I think he's going to be a great pro. And that's why I'm so excited about the top of this draft, because, you know, Jalen Suggs might be a number one pick, you know, in many other drafts. So, no doubt. Uh, you know, here they are with Toronto with a chance to, you know, kind of after a step back year this year for so many different reasons, whether it was injury or COVID or the fact they played, they didn't play in Canada at all. They played in Tampa Bay for their home games. And now they may end up with, um, you may call them the second best point guard in the draft, you know, after Kate Cunningham. Mark, we're hearing a lot of, I, I'd say, rumors from the media saying that, oh, 
the Pistons are possibly looking to trade out of the number one pick. We did see Troy Weaver speak and say, hey, these are just, you know, stop believing everything you read. But yet he never really confirmed that, yes, we are going to take Cade Cunningham. Why do you think that the media is trying to put so much drama into this? (laughs) Oh, we just love drama, don't we? (laughs) Uh, From a media and societal perspective, I think... um, You know, I saw Woj in the lobby a couple hours ago, and I think he's got seven phones attached to him. And I I joked with him, I brought an extra uh, iPad this year. I'm calling the Woj pad. It's going to be dedicated (laughs) to his Twitter feed because he has all the information uh, that that needs to be known. And he's already, last check, and I haven't been on the Internet in about five minutes, uh, Uh, at least on Twitter. That's all it takes. that's it. Five minutes. I could yeah. have missed five tweets already. Easy. I think he's already pretty much tweeted out uh, Detroit, yeah. Houston, and Cleveland in their top three picks. So <laughs> if I'm the Pistons, I don't even give it up either. Why not have some intrigue? Why not listen to some more offers? Especially if teams feel they can get a good player, you know, a few picks back, maybe you get a little bit more of a haul. So, um, it, 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 but if you go by what Woj is saying, uh, Kate Cunningham, barring that great uh, last-minute offer uh, should go number one to Detroit. Mark Kester joins us, ESPN Radio. Have the draft tonight. Make sure you tune in. Uh, starting at 7 o'clock tonight. I wanted to ask you about uh, Giannis and uh, the Bucks. What a great story they were. And I, I just, you know, fall in love with a player. That's that's my guy, man. I mean, I'm not a LeBron guy. I don't like what he does. I don't like – I call him a carpetbagger. Nonetheless, that's just my opinion. Uh, I love that what Giannis did. What's your take on that Bucks team? And is there another Bucks team out there? Yeah, that's a good question. I think um, how can you not love Giannis for many yeah. reasons? I remember being here at the draft uh, eight years ago when I, I have this list right here. I could share with you all. It's about four pages long. <laughs> it's all the pronunciations of guys that may get selected tonight. And when I looked at Giannis's last name eight years ago and again today, it hasn't gotten any better. Um, it's, <laughs> it's a tough one to pronounce. you got to go slow. There's like five different accepted pronunciations. And so um, it was you know, nice to see a guy that we had no idea eight years ago, selected 15, could develop into the player he became. And then, to your point, after two MVPs, and talk of a team that just couldn't get over the top, and then the guy's knee bends away, it should never bend, and nine days later, he's he's playing in the finals. I mean, how can you not? And then everything he did, 50 points to close, and his press conference afterward, and even before that, talking about, you know, life in general, you just can't but uh, help but root for a team, especially if you live in a medium-sized market. It's, uh, It's a great story. Is there another one around there? I think Phoenix could easily have been you know, the NBA champs as well. Utah is another team that, you know, for whatever reasons, uh, just didn't work against the Clippers. You know, credit to LA, Utah had some failures down the stretch. That's another team that could easily have won a championship this year. So that's like three smaller market size where, you know, there's really good stories, uh, really good players, guys that were taken later in draft. Uh, I think Donovan Mitchell might have been a a 15 pick or a 16 pick. We know so we passed it's not on him. always. Yeah, everybody did. The Knicks, the Knicks passed on him, and he lived in New York and worked out in their facility. Sick thing. I mean, it's, you know, it's crazy. I'm a lifelong Knicks fan. Grew up from, grew up in New Jersey, so I was 11 when yeah. they won the championship. Look at me now. I mean, uh, if that doesn't tell you the Knicks story, I don't know what does. We want to be the next Milwaukee Bucks here yes. in Detroit. How long before? And I know Mac asked you earlier, but. Really, what's your take on the Pistons going forward before we let you go? Yeah, I think, look, you know, you have to figure it's at least a couple of years, you know, to just get the young talent going. It is going to take, I think, somewhere along the line, an acquisition of a veteran-type player, somebody to lead the way. Or, you know, look, if Cade Cunningham's the real deal, and two, three years from now, you know, he's in MVP conversation for whatever reason, there's your guy. So... You know, it's it's a process. I hate to use that word because I think the Sixers might have marketed it, and I might have to huh. put fifteen dollars. Those in the poor guys. For saying it, but <laughs> yeah, but you know what? It's a great ride too. Who wouldn't want to be the Milwaukee Bucks in the last three years? I know it was heartache two years ago, blowing a two old lead in the conference finals. But when you could say you're in contention, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. not just fighting for an eight seed. We saw Pistons teams be an eight seed right. a few years ago, and we you don't know want they that. go up against Cleveland. You don't want that. No. So 
you know, you get to a, you get to that mid spot, that four or five, and then eventually, if you've got a team, um, you know, that can really compete, you know, then you just throw you throw your hat in there and look. These are best of seven series. You never know when there's going to be injuries on either side, and next thing you know, you're like Milwaukee, where you're one Kevin Durant size eighteen yep. away from getting knocked out in the second round. And next thing you know, you're having a parade. Hey, I lied. You got me on Philly. Where's Ben Simmons going tonight? <laughs> That's a good question. Two things to watch, I would think, would be Simmons. That's a complicated one because uh, of the, the length of his contract that's left, and everyone feels they could probably fix him because he's still a walking triple-double despite yep. all the issues that he's had. Um, and the other shoot. is, you know, yeah, 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 I mean, he passed up a dunk right at the rim against Phil, against uh, Atlanta. That and, I th- and the Lakers are going to buy. I don't know if they're going to buy him, but they're going to trade they're going to trade for a veteran that's going to help that team, whether it's Buddy Heald from Sacramento or DeMar DeRozan from San Antonio. You know, that's the other part of tonight. We got a lot of, you know, great young talent picks. But last year we had 16 trades and 55 Ooh. players that moved. Some wow. of them multiple moves. Yeah. That was a hell of a draft tonight. last year. That was a fun draft was. last year. Except that was the that night was. that we and found we were, out we found out Clay Thompson blew out his ACL that night, which which sucked. Right, that's how it all started. And yep. last year we did a virtual draft from Bristol, and all of my broadcast partners were somewhere else. I was by myself. Yeah. Uh, PJ was in Seattle, and Doris Burke was, I think, in Philly, and uh, Lafonso Ellis was, you know, in South Bend, Indiana. Tonight we'll all be together. Great. Uh, you mentioned Seth. Uh, you mentioned PJ, Ramona Shelburne, who's done a lot of sidelines for us during the uh, All Star Game and Finals. She's got her uh, kind of the, her ear to the internet, if you will, with a lot of trade stuff. So, uh, so we should have a good time here in Brooklyn. It's good to be all together tonight. I'll be at the Tiger game with Mac, and I'll have you in my ear on the radio, ESPN <laughs> Radios. Mark Kessler joining us from Brooklyn. Have a great broadcast Thanks tonight, a lot, Mark. Mark. And Thanks make sure so you much. thank Al I Rosenberg for that. us. Good, 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 to, good to see all you guys. Al's the best. He'll He's the best. Sound good. Good luck. Good luck to you, Tigers. My Yankees are getting clocked right now in Tampa. So. I know. Yeah, but you so got Garrett Cole. Nice job. You got Gallo coming. Don't worry. Yeah. I, you, I'm waiting to blow you, you, Maz's head off right now when uh, <laughs> when, uh, when the Rizzo Red Sox get, get Rizzo. When Rizzo goes uh, to the Red Sox. So, uh, I, yeah. I'm going to a uh, Billy Joel concert next Wednesday at Boston. Sweet. That's the only way you can get me to Fenway Park. <laughs> there you go, brother. Bye. There you go. Wait for him at the Garden once a month. You know that. <laughs> yes, that's right. The Garden is a special place for him. Good to be with you all. Thanks, Thanks, Mark. Mark. Mark, Thanks so much for swinging by. Make sure that you are following Mark on his social media. It's at Mark Kestisher. Um, Great. What a dude. All you New Yorkers are the same. Hey, man. I don't know what to tell you. That's that's 12. 14 nothing Rays over the Yankees. Garrett Cole started. 14 nothing Tampa Bay. They're terrible. He doesn't have his stuff. He doesn't have the magic. He needs the spider tag. Give it back to him. Give him back. Poor Maz. <laughs> Maz, will, please, Maz will cry. Please just give him the sticky stuff, please. All right, guys. Up next, we're going to be talking Lions Camp Bro. updates for their day two of training camp. So you guys stick around. We've got Lions Talk up next. You're tuning into The Hook on Woodward Sports Network. I'm looking to bring on another HVAC tech right now. We are recruiting five to 10 techs a month. We're looking to grow and expand. Every new tech we hire is from Northwestern Tech. The hands-on training is fantastic. They're always my first call. We love hiring Northwestern Tech grads. They come out trained and ready to work. Our program is only 10 and a half months and our next classes are starting soon. So why wait? I'm looking to hire. I'm looking to hire. Hire a graduate of Northwestern Tech. Northwestern Tech. Northwestern Tech. Northwestern Tech. What's up? It's Thursday. Coast, yes, since 1919, they have been providing lights and knives and all this stuff for all you do-it-yourselfers, first responders, want to get outdoors. I know it's the summertime. It's cottage season. You might need the machete to cut down some weeds or whatever. Coastportland.com. Use WSN20 for 20% off or go hashtag HowWeCoast. Yes, tomorrow's Friday. I will be giving away a $100 gift certificate. How we coast. Anywhere you follow Woodward Sports, you hookers, get it in there and tell me how you would use some of these products. So go to coastportland.com to see what it is. Use WSN20 for 20% off, and I will be giving away a gift certificate tomorrow. Hashtag how we coast. 
Welcome back to the Hook on Woodward Sports Network. All right, guys. Football is really here as we're now into day two of Lions training camp. You know what I have learned in these very two short days of training camp? Lions training camp. They're all the same? No. Only the names have changed? (laughs) Every day? It seems we're wasting away. Another place where the faces are so cold. Travel uh, what have you learned? As you get back home. I have learned. I'm a cowboy. I have learned. I'm a steel horse I ride. <laughs> you know, I'm about to jump in any and second, I'm but want I'm trying. it. Dead or alive. That's my show, man. Dead Deadliest or catch. Alive. Uh, I, I was trying so Dead hard to just stay alive. on track, but I just I couldn't. I couldn't. I got sucked in. Sucked in. All right. It is how much I love Dan Campbell. Mm-hmm. I love him more and more every single day that I am following training camp. I mean, it just what a great dude. He's, he's a role model. Yes. He's a role model. He, out there he sweats yes. and breathes football. You look at him and you're like, I, I want to play football. Yes. I mean, put up his tweet. Look what he says about his team. We're big, we're long, and we look strong. We look explosive. That's I just like that. That's the quick quote. Yeah. I mean, do you think freaking Matt Patricia saying anything like that? He's the more I re- the more I see this guy, the more my hatred I mean, for Matt we, Patricia comes yeah, out. Yeah, but let have it go and just will, know that yeah. it's that it's and enjoy it's, the fact that that we, we're on the right track and that see it's going through and and appreciating and facing the fact that okay, it wasn't right. You know, the thing that just is disturbing is you see Jared Davis, uh, who was one of our He's with the Jets now talk, yeah. Yeah. with our Jets to come out yesterday and say that, you know, he really contemplated quitting football yeah. because he lost the fun. Lost like it. that's mm-hmm. that's the thing that and it can happen. It's happened to different guys. That's why mental illness without getting into it. So the fact that everybody buys in, the fact that they are buying in, that it's the we, that it's all about getting everything better. It's not about Dan Campbell. He's never exuded. It's about him. It's about the we. From, yeah. the, from the rules to the lessons, and it's just dropping a little bit of knowledge here and there to pick up. And it's for us as fans, too. I think Pilar really likes this the best about Dan Campbell. It his, is. His up-downs. His up-downs. Look at This him. is amazing. When was the Look last Look at the bad time? leg he's got, and he's still doing it. He looks... He looks like it's he's in agony and he's still doing it. And he's it. still doing it with his team. He's getting down in there with them. Like you know what I mean? When was the last time we had a coach do this with with our team? Well, usually coaches aren't that young. Not <laughs> Sean Payton could be doing this. Well, he could be. He might be. I mean, he might Cliff be. Kingsbury. I mean, but they that's might what I'm be. saying like they could but I we're not seeing Lions videos. Lions coaches. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. I, was, I mean, like there's a ton of them. Sean McVay, there's a bunch of but to really see somebody Who's out there getting dirty with the team, sweating with the team? I mean, it's it's just rad, guys. Yeah, I cool. love him more and more it's a good every start. single day. It it's a good sure start. is. And they, uh, Corey and the guys asked Dan Campbell about those up downs. What's that? I survived. That's good way to put it. Listen, that was AG, man. That, honestly, that was all AG uh, with the up downs because he had said it the night before the defense meeting. After my meeting, he goes in there and he sits to Tom kind of what they're doing. And he tells them, look, we're starting the tradition here, guys. We're doing 40 different things. And uh, so I'm watching, I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> my first thought, man, I'm glad I'm not them. And then my second thought was, man, I, maybe I need to be in there with them. Um, since it's my defense, too, you know. So, but that was all AG. And the worst move I made was getting between Aaron Glenn and Aubrey Pleasant. All right, I should have gone down to the other end. Um, but no, it, it was good, man. I could listen to That's all AG. And, and by the way, the whole defensive staff got involved. And if they couldn't do it, then they were doing planes or whatever. But man, it's pretty impressive. It just set the tone. That's it really exact, does. Sets the tone. It sets the tone from day one. Yeah. You know, we're all in this together. You're not going to ask, you know, about leadership is, is that you're going to ask somebody else to do something you're not going to do. I mean, that's the one thing is Coach asked you because he's going to do it himself. He'd do it if he could, but he can't. Mm-hmm. It's the bottom line. That's what leadership is. Yeah. It's not the words, it's the actions. I dig the whole staff like we've been talking about. I, I just like that it was a bunch of football players yeah. that, that are on this staff and Told they could relate to these kids and uh, these veterans there got to respect sure. what they've put on the field here. So I think uh, we've done a wonderful job. Brad and the gang, uh, give Chris Sheila, Spielman. Give Sheila, give yep. Sheila credit. Sheila's yeah, Brad, give, give Rod man. Wood the credit to – 
to put the people in position that it looks like we're going to actually gain some traction and actually mm-hmm. maybe win a playoff game in the next few years. Hey, one of their last uh, choices in the draft last year was that wide receiver, Jamar Jefferson. And he's looking to try to make a spot on this team. And there's nobody that's guaranteed a spot out of those wide receivers sure. right now. Maybe Terrell Williams. But well, but even this, he, he signed a one-year deal. Yeah. I mean, everybody, you right. know. You're Perman, fighting for your all, job. Absolutely. Rashawn Perriman. Every all these single guys. one. They all signed a one-year deal. But uh, Motor City Dan Campbell had this to say about Jamar Jefferson, his rookie wide Coach, out. there's been a lot been said about what, you know, DeAndre Swift or Jamar Williams would look like in the running game. But what are your early observations of Jamar Jefferson? Jamar, I, you know what? I've been pleased with pleased with Jamar. There again, we're only three days in uh, and only one practice in, but from where he came in uh, summer and you look at him, watch him run, uh, his weight, um, you know, we had extra days with the rookies before, so we were kind of doing walkthroughs, but just mentally and watching him move a little bit. Uh, and then even yesterday, you know, I, I like, I like, I like what I've seen. They're getting so early. No, Dan, in your, in your, uh, that was Corey's question. Obviously, running back Jamar Jefferson. I said wide out my bad, but uh, running well, but back, running backs like, wide open as well, except for the top two spots. I mean, really, it yep. it is everything. I feel like at this point is wide open, but it does come down to which running back is going to be the most versatile. Which one can not only run the ball but catch the ball. I mean, in today's league, you've got to be able to catch the ball from the back. You you have to, and then who can block? I still you think they're going to sign a, a veteran running back. But I think it's going to be, uh, you know, Todd Gurley or I don't know who else, but I know uh, Adrian really Peterson's see, out there. He's not going to be back he's here. He's not going to be back. I, I mean, know, but it, I, I can still see them coming after uh, and getting Todd Gurley. I would love to see Todd Gurley come to this team. How about I mean, you, Matt? We could get him for cheap. And no, I, th- I think that they, they have the talent. I think we're, uh, it'll be a plug and place. I think it's a committee. You know, I think uh, DeAndre Swift, you want to see him take the majority, but there's room for anybody for fighting for a job and that's what they've created there so we'll wait we'll have to wait and see it's uh, i'm you know i'm not eager for first game i'm eager for every day to hear what's coming out of camp and let's build this together Corey and the guys also asked dan campbell about romeo okwara this is what dc said Oh, I, look, I think, I think a lot of it translates to what he was doing last year. It, there's things about it that are similar because we, you know, they had, you would say just in our base, we're a little more three down, uh, where there is, you can consider five down, but honestly, he's still playing that outside rusher, the end, kind of. So it's not like he hasn't done that. Um, but I think, uh, so I, look, I think it's very similar. I think it's something that, that He'll do well for us. And, and one, of, one of the reasons we wanted him back, you know, we love his effort and uh, his length. Um, you know, he just gives it all the time. And, and Talking about Romeo Okwara and, uh, you know, on that defensive side yeah. of the ball. Uh, there's a lot lot happening over there. So last year, they could only go up from where they were last year. Lots of new faces there and a new assistant coach out there, Aubrey Pleasant, a kid that had the world on his shoulders last year was Jeff Okuda. Mm-hmm. You know, didn't have a good year. Wound up getting hurt at the end of the year, and uh, they pulled him back uh, the last three, four. They didn't uh, put him in a position game. to succeed. No, they so. did not. They put their whole uh, – Quinn and Patricia put their whole careers, hmm. Lions careers, on that kid's shoulder. And it did, he just didn't have a great year. But this year, Jeff Okuda says he's getting help by Aubrey Pleasant, his new head coach, his new secondary coach. I think it's benefiting me greatly on um, the fact – before training camp, I just sent him a text thanking him for all the work he's put in with me throughout the course of 2021. And um, you know, I've seen, I've seen the improvements already. So just having him by my side, uh, having Coach HG by my side, I think that's been great for me as well as the whole position group. Mac, what do you see at Jeff Okuda this year? Oh, big year. Big year. Not only the fact that uh, Pleasant, but Aaron Glenn and, and the team around him that supports him. I think that, you know, he's still, you got to remember, third overall pick, okay, so he went too high. But this is a first-round talent. This is a top-10 mm-hmm. talent, a guy, no matter where you pick him, and he could be a difference. So sometimes you have to believe in this player. Um, I've watched and seen the perseverance and seen what, what he said, not only in interviews but in social media, and I like his attitude. 
And I think he's coming here not taking nothing for granted, but he's going to work, and I think if he stays healthy. And he's one of those guys that needs to be supported, right? He's, he's not, like he said, he can't carry the world on his shoulder, or should he ex- be expected to be. But if he progresses to uh, what they thought he was when they drafted him, because he's got the talent in there, then he could be that shutdown guy that we're looking for when it, when it matters. And that's when it matters is when it's time to win playoff games. So I expect a big year out of him. It's going to be a tough start. We read the schedule yesterday, and it's not its not an easy start. I yeah, mean, but no. it's the way you want it, man. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's like, okay, throw me into the fire. Let's see what we got. Because as long as you are in it together and you have the work ethic and, you know, Dan Campbell staying, you know, long, strong, explosive speed, you know what I mean? We'll find out what mm-hmm. we got, but we'll find out together. And uh, a guy that really uh, is like the defensive face right now is Trey Flowers. And he's looking for a, a big bounce back here as well. He talked about the brand-new coaching staff. Coach Campbell talked earlier today about how pleased he's been with your transition. Mm-hmm. How good has he been and the coaching staff mm-hmm. with you um, being yeah. switching out? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're teaching. You know, the teaching is unbelievable just, you know, as far as how they teach you, how – you know, they let me be myself, but then also, you know, uh, giving me some knowledge, giving me some ways to understand and do it a lot better. So, uh, you know, that they understand as far as the transition, you know, it may be a tough transition or whatever, but, you know, I'm I'm all ears. I, I take coaching well, and, uh, you know, they, they're able to coach me in a way that, you know, I can understand it and just go out there and play football. In what ways are they letting you be yourself? Mm-hmm. Is that something that was like, yeah. constricted last season? Uh-huh. No, I, I'm just saying as far as, you know, my old self, you know, knowing that this is a new system or they t- they're telling me to maybe do something different, you know, they they knowing that, okay, probably if, if I've been doing something good over the years, then they might leave that alone rather than teaching the new way, you know, just, okay, you do it that way. But then, you know, if it's something that can improve me, that allow me to improve and help the team, then, you know, they'll teach me that way. So I'm always taking coaching, um, you know, I'm always, you know, just practicing on whatever they, however they see fit as far as, you know, it being the best or the best way to do it, then, you know, I practice and stuff. So. I wouldn't want to try to block that guy. He looks like he is in ripped shape. Well, that's the thing, and being taught properly. Everything you hear coming out of there is is what you want to hear. I know it's two days into training camp, but so far so good. But still, I mean, what all the players are alluding is they all seem to be happy in the system. Every single one of them, every single time a player is in a press conference, they're almost excited to be doing a press conference. They're excited to talk about this team and the changes of this team and the, the atmosphere of this team. So... That just alone goes such a long way with the team. And, you know, we talked about it yesterday. We touched on it right now. The start of the season, the first three games are going to be crucial. I mean, it's the 49ers, the Packers, and the Ravens. I mean, it's almost one of those things where they're going to have to be able to go in there, punch these teams in the face hard to try and get that win. I'm almost like that reason, about you the other day. <laughs> you you yeah. like punching you people in the face punch hard. Them in the, punch them in the mouth, man. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, really really get in there and, and do your absolute best. But no, if for any reason we don't walk away with these first three games. Downs every day that you go to. It's a, the, you're putting that everybody going to every day knows how to. they're going to have to do it. So it's all about that routine and all doing mm-hmm. it together. So embracing the suck together because some days it'll be easier than others, but you look to your right, you look to your left, and right. everybody's involved, so psh, you can't complain. Mac, yeah. what's the equivalent of the uh, down-ups, up-downs in, in hockey? Uh, probably doing doing uh, probably doing mountains, which is like blue line, goal line, red line, goal line, mm-hmm. you know, building the wall or something like that, which you would do, and that's a training camp thing because you usually do it at the end and to practice, and it's uh, it's called the bag skate for a reason. <laughs> Never heard Brooks, of course, the Team USA, yeah. up and down again, again, yeah. again. Yeah. I watched uh, Miracle the other day, so did, it's in and, my head and, again. And, what, and how did that end up? <laughs> they won the goal. Okay, I'm just saying. They won the goal. <laughs> what do you put in to get out? <laughs> All right, guys. Well, when we come back, we're going to talk about boy, oh boy, how fast things change in Vegas. And we're talking about the Packers. They're going from plus 16 to plus 1,200. Just like that. They sign Randall Cobb. They get their quarterback back and happy. They get his his shiny weapon and Devontae Adams happy. And suddenly, 
they're looking like one of the, the top three teams that could win Super Bowl. I mean, just like that, guys. That is how fast things change. So stick around. We're going to be talking Packers when we come back. You're tuning into The Hook on Woodward Sports Network. Tony is a third-generation logger that has a simple, practical approach to life and work. That's why his Coast DX342 knife is perfect for him. The stainless steel blade is rust-resistant and made for all-weather use. And the double roll lock safety ensures that it will never inadvertently close when he doesn't want it to. That's why Coast is trusted tough. Hey everybody, it's Maz for our good friends at Legacy Partners Insurance. I've told you a million times, and I don't even have to tell you, you know. Nobody really wants to have insurance, but we need it because things happen. Last night's rain, we got lucky in St. Clair Shores, we didn't get flooded. But you need insurance, and why not get a good insurance company that you can trust, one that's been around for over 100 years. A local agent that knows the local insurance market, it's Legacy Partners Insurance. They're independent, so they get lots of quotes and make the carriers compete for your business. They shop between 7 and 10 carriers for your personal, that means your home and your auto, 50 carriers for your commercial accounts for your business. They also have, of course, benefit packages, life insurance, and Medicare information. They've been doing this since 1919, so you could trust them. If you haven't had your insurance quoted this year, or if you had and you just want to check it, call Legacy Partners at this number, 586 209 4106. I'll personally hook you up with a, a good agent. Go to Team Maz, especially on the website designed for Woodward Sports. Legacy Partners INS forward slash Woodward Sports. Takes you to a landing page, asks you for your name, number, email, any way you want them to get in touch with you. They will run your stuff for you. And if they could beat the deal, you got a hell of a deal. You lost nothing because it's a free call and a free try. Give them a call. Legacy Partners Insurance. Make sure you tell them Maz from Woodward Sports sent you. Welcome back to The Hook on Woodward Sports Network. So things are looking really great for the Green Bay Packers. Quarterback's happy now. You got Devontae Adams sticking around. They just signed Randall Cobb back. They're putting, for a sixth-round pick. Yeah. That's they're putting it. the team back together, guys. This is terrible news round pick. for the Detroit Lions. This is not what I wanted to see at all. At all. But like we said, and like Max no, says, it's, it's not our year to win this year. It's beautiful because this is it. So let's all yeah. get on the bandwagon. Right. If you got family and friends that are <laughs> in the UP that are cheeseheads, you know, be nice to them this year. The let's Upers. all root for the Packers this year because then this is it. You right. watch. Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams will be a paired deal with something else somewhere next year, and we Denver. won't have to deal with them. So let's just... Get him out of town, yep, yep. especially if they win. Anyway, uh, the, he so. got he wants what happened. I'm going to play the Aaron Rodgers. Uh, yesterday we gave you a 10 second snippet of his uh, conversation, of his press conference, where he kind of slipped and said, "Oh, I love the Packers uh, fans. I love the Packers organ. I mean, I love the fans. I love." He didn't say organization. You know, he kind of danced around it. He's a funny dude. But uh, as Pilar was telling you, in Vegas, they were plus 1,600, which is a pretty good number. You put 100 down to win the Super Bowl, you win 1,600. Now they're down to plus 1,200. Believe me, get them now because they're going to be under 1,000 mm -hmm. here in just a couple of weeks, especially once that season starts and you see what you got. But yesterday, Aaron Rodgers, in front of the Green Bay media, he kind of told his whole story. It's a four-minute interview. It's a four-minute press conference. I want to play it for you. Aaron Rodgers yesterday in Green Bay. There was a lot of things that transpired. This wasn't, uh, you know, a draft day uh, thing. You know, this was uh, started with a conversation in February um, that the season ended. And I just expressed, you know, my desire to be uh, more involved in conversations directly affecting my job. Um, also, uh, I wanted to help the organization maybe learn from them some of the mistakes in the past, in my opinion, about the way that some of the uh, outgoing veterans were treated um, and just the fact that we didn't retain uh, a number of uh, players that I felt like were core players to our foundation, our locker room, high character guys. I'm talking about Charles Woodson, Jordy Nelson, Julius Peppers, Clay Matthews, Randall Cobb, James Jones. 
John Kuhn, Brett Good, TJ Lang, Brian Belaga, Casey Hayward, Mike Hyde, guys who were, you know, exceptional players for us, but great locker room guys, high character guys, many of them who weren't offered a contract at all or were extremely lowballed or were, you know, maybe in my opinion, not uh, given the respect on the way out that guys of their status and stature and high character deserved. Um, and then it kind of progressed from there into a commitment for the 2021 season and beyond. Uh, that really wasn't uh, given at any time. So for me, I had to assess the situation, not necessarily wanting to be a lame duck quarterback, especially after an MVP season, which I think you can understand. Um, and then the other part uh, in, in February was wanting to be a part of conversations involving free agents, uh, which has never happened in my career. Um, you know, I've, I've. There you go. All he wants are those guys to have talked to him. Yeah. For crying out loud, Mac. Could you imagine doing something with the Red Wings and, and no one talking to Steve Eiserman? I mean, it, it wouldn't happen. Tom Brady, same thing in, in New England. Russell Wilson yeah. in well, Seattle. Well, Russell Wilson got upset, yeah. yeah. Almost cost him his career there. Yeah. Well, well, I think that at the end of the day, through all the whatever he said, she said drama or whatever, is that Aaron's truths come out, you know, and, and the fact that it's not about him, it's about – the biggest thing he said is things that affect his job. If he's gonna, if he's gonna be the best quarterback that he can be, and it's not, to, he's not saying that I want this or I want that or I want this, but it's saying that hey, if you want my opinion or let me know which way you're going, understanding right. the why. No, I, I think I gained more respect. I love Aaron Rodgers though because you know he's got that California cool. I like his his swarmy uh, sense of humor, but at the end of the day. You know, and these these are things you mentioned. Our our buddy TJ Lang get mentioned in there, and and f from what TJ says, and I've never met Aaron Rodgers, but through you know different guys that are your friends that have played, is that's the type of guy he is, and and the locker room, and how many times did he say high character guys and mm -hmm. stuff? So this ain't about the money. This ain't about anything else. It's about doing the right thing, and he's using his platform to speak his mind, and, and like he said. In my opinion, yeah. right, right. That's all he's offering, that's and it. and he should be like you said, he's the leader, as yeah. your number one yeah. guy. Hey, Bill and Parcells, when he took the Patriots to the Super Bowl and they lost uh, to the Packers that year, but the next year he was out of there because Kraft wouldn't let him do what he wanted to do. And his and his famous sentence was, "If you want me to do the cooking, you gotta let me go do the shopping." That's, sure. that's just the way it is. That That's what you do. And that's what they didn't allow with, right. with Aaron Rodgers. And, you know, I think that this also answered the question that media was asking. Um, is his team, is the locker room going to respect him after all this drama? Well, now that Aaron Rodgers has finally spoken himself mm -hmm. and it wasn't through hearsay of a source close to him or friends close to him, it was actually from the horse's mouth. I think that the locker room are, is going to stand by him and respect him the so much more. The locker room was always behind him. You don't, you don't. No, but they were saying the, the amount of drama. P Pilar. Because I feel like what he did right now, he said is, I'm willing to not play for fair, for for the players Let me to be treated question, with respect. Pilar, do you think that the, the players in the room didn't know about what he was all about. Of course they did. No, no, but what he did, was but all about. we didn't. The media right. didn't, right? And that's what I'm saying. The, the question that the media was saying is, are the players going to yeah. respect him in the locker room? And Because we're thinking, like, he's just stirring up all this stuff. Like, what does he want? What does he want? He never came out and spoke for himself as to what he wants. Now that he's speaking for it, now that he's speaking for himself and saying exactly what he wants, of course I'm, that locker room is going to next to I'm just trying to, no, no. But I'm trying to point out the fact that all along, right. the locker room was on point. This is a team. These are teammates. That whatever, 100%. whether it was Devonte Adams or AJ Hawk or whoever, former teammates, they former were all guys. on the same page of about what he was doing. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to tell you. No, I agree. And that's for what I'm for saying. months we and know. months and months. You know now what? We know. Screw the media. Screw the public mm -hmm. or whatever else. And I know it's the Packers. And for everybody saying I can't cheer for the Packers, I'm saying it facetiously. To go, come on, go Packers, you got it all now. Uncle Aaron's getting what he wants, what he wants. Who gives a care? Because this year is a setup for us 
And then after that, we'll be blowing him out of the water. So he, and, he, right. and he won't be there. Here's Aaron Rodgers. What if he's up. happy and he stays? He That's won't good. be. He might. He's, he's going what high. If, he, he won't. Then it really pissed me off. It's Jordan Love. <laughs> it's going to be Jordan Love's turn. If, if he's the quarterback that they drafted, it's going to be Jordan Love's time, and he's going to leave, and he's going to try to go somewhere and, and win, just like Brett Favre mm-hmm. did. He went to the Vikings, went to the Jets. Uh, there you go. That's what Aaron Rodgers is going to wind up doing. He's going to go hunt for that next Super Bowl ring. He's only got one Super Bowl ring right now. Actually, Brett Favre only has one Super Bowl ring as well. As much as both of those guys are going to the Hall of Fame, they got two Super Bowls between them. But here's part two of Aaron Rodgers yesterday with the Green Bay media. I've trained with a number of NFL guys most of my career in the off seasons. Um, my agency at the first has had a number of high draft picks over the years. Uh, I've tried to pass along information. Um, hasn't really been uh, used, shall we say. Um, so I wanted to offer my services as a recruiter, you know. Uh, and I think we can all understand, you know, Green Bay isn't, uh, uh, you know, a huge vacation destination. People are coming here to play with me, uh, to play with our team, and, and knowing that they can win a championship here. And the fact that I haven't been used in those discussions was one I wanted to change moving forward. And I felt like based on my years, uh, the way I can still play, that that should be a natural part of the conversation. Um, as that progressed from that point, nothing really changed on that front. Uh, so we got into March and the conversation changed. Um, as I felt like, uh, if you can't commit to me past 2021, and I'm not a part of recruiting process and for agency, if I'm not a part of the future, then instead of letting me be a lame duck quarterback, if you want to make a change and move forward, then go ahead and do it. Um, that obviously didn't happen. Uh, like I said, it wasn't a draft day thing. There were conversations for uh, a number of months leading up to that. Post the draft, I think what basically happened was then they said, uh, you know, we'll, we'll give you some we'll give you some money now. Let's we'll see if we can throw some money at you. I said from the start it wasn't about the money. Um, obviously, I didn't show up for the off-season program or mini camp. To me, it was bigger than this. It was about uh, trying to be a resource for the organization that I care about and love so much. Eli, uh, excuse me. Uh, social media is all over him. I mean, nine, I'd say ninety-nine percent of you guys and gals are hating on Aaron, calling him a baby, me, 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 all that kind of stuff. I, I just don't see it that way. I, I think I look at I a great player. I don't see it that way either. I see, I, I see somebody. I see that. Imagine if that was Matthew Stafford yeah. or whatever. That was somebody standing up and just sort of making. What you heard is you can speculate and not like him or what, anything of, but you got his truth. And yeah. If you listen to him, if you care, right, like that's the whole thing. And from a former player, right, hearing – Maybe a guy you played with, or that you know that that's like uh, here in a Zetterberg here the appreciation that you played with him during his career, and it's not about that. It's just that he's self aware of that. Mm-hmm. They're calling so, him a whiner. They're calling him you know a big cry baby. You're supposed to. You're from Detroit. You're supposed to hate him, Maz. Right. His, you know what? Like but it's I the think... same thing as as hey, talk Cade. Cade, Cade, Cade. What the fuck do you want me to say other than welcome to yeah. Detroit? I know. What, what else idiots? can we say? We, gotta, we will talk more Cade, like, I promise. When there I is, have it. Right. Hey, how but about we have a conversation him? with him? Right. I mean, how many yeah, times can I go to, to Detroit, Andrew? Like how said. many Detroit. times can I go to these kids? And what more do you want me to say about them? Nonetheless, yeah. a Raj. Yeah. a Raj. I mean, after, after watching that press conference, I feel like I've gained well, so much more respect for him. And I would, I would love to to have a quarterback so involved in the team that says, I want to invest in the future. Use me as a recruiting tool to get people. People want to come play with me. Who wouldn't mm-hmm. want to go catch balls from Aaron Rodgers? I mean, no doubt. There's... Randall Cobb is one. Randall well, Cobb. Right, but he was one that Randall yeah. Cobb was let go and, and it pissed off Aaron Rodgers and that was one of the guys that, that he they brought didn't... back. I mean, he listed a bunch of them, both offensively and defensively. He was fighting for this organization to just do better by the player sides and that whether he's in a in a a rival to us or not just as a human being i applaud that i will say this mac i want your opinion on this as much as they tore the packers down and all those players that he said they got rid of unceremoniously 
they still compete every single year on our playing either the last game or the next to the last game of the year. Mm -hmm. So they must know what they're doing. You know what, Matt, sometimes people like you don't like facts, right? I like explanation of the truth because then you know what you're dealing with. It's the same thing as, you, don't you think know, I, with, I, I it's want the facts? Same, what? You don't think I want facts? No, sometimes you let facts get in the way. Not of not of real things, of of other stuff, right? Like like when you say he's got eight championships and he's only got two or the same amount, mm -hmm. that those are facts that you get yes. away. Not facts like this on life or the reality of the situation that's going to make it better. They obviously do something right, so you want to sort of learn, right? Wouldn't you like an Aaron Rodgers type to lead your organization? Yeah. Maybe like a Cade Cunningham, and not. Just to be spoken or respected. Did you just or say Kate like Cunningham? I did say Kate oh. Cunningham. Okay. Just check it. Making sure you're bringing him up. Oh, now, my Tom Pelissero put out a. Well, here's Tom Pelissero, NFL Network, on the whole deal that just went down to get you know who back in Green Bay. Colleen, the Packers finalized this deal yesterday. It really had been in place for a couple of days, but because of salary cap reasons, they had to wait until after 4 p.m. yesterday. But yes, they are trading a sixth round pick in next year's draft to the Texans for Randall Cobb. And Houston's actually picking up $3 million of Cobb's salary in order to facilitate this. This absolutely is something that Aaron Rodgers had pushed for months. Brian Gutekunst, the Packers general manager, did not mince words today, saying, without Aaron, we probably wouldn't be pursuing it. This is what Aaron wanted. That's why we did it. So an interesting test here, Colleen, for new Packers assistant general manager, Aaron Rodgers. He went through the laundry list yesterday during his press conference of all the older veteran players that he wanted to come back be re-signed later in their careers, maybe come back for a pay cut. Well, one of those guys was Randall Cobb. Now he's headed back to Green Bay. We will see whether Rogers' theory that bringing those guys back for one more shot toward the end of their careers can be helpful to the team when Cobb is back in a Packers uniform in 2021. Okay, he got his way. You heard mm -hmm. him. They wouldn't have done this deal. They wouldn't have done it without Aaron. Aaron right. wanted this, and Gutekust said it. This is why we're doing it, because Aaron wanted it. So he's right. kind of saying, all right, there you go, kid. And I, I feel that that is kind of how everything's going to go moving forward. I feel that the only way that they were going to get um, Aaron Rodgers back was to say, we'll give you what you want. And we all, need you. And for all Good the Aaron Rodgers haters out there, I just want to put this little, uh, this little tweet or this Twitter picture up for you. The other day I put up the Tom Brady <laughs> when he had his rings up, uh, and I had all the excuses for his rings. These are all the excuses for Aaron Rodgers on his two hands. And uh, they're, it's pretty funny. Uh, they're all pretty, pretty cool. He's won one Super Bowl. I figured you guys might want to see, check all of that out. So uh, I, the internet is always undefeated. Mm -hmm. They always come up with some great. But you know stuff. that Super Bowl ring is on his middle finger. So yes. I think that he's just kind of having the last laugh with everybody. I know, but there's all the excuses he's that he's great. only won one Super Bowl. The other day we put out the Tom Brady. Now we give you the Aaron Rodgers. There right. you go, folks. You're up to date on Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, and of course yes. the Lions. And the Lions, we finally heard uh, from Aaron Rodgers himself. You know who else is finally telling their story, getting a chance to tell their story is Cole Beasley. So we're gonna be getting to a little bit Cole Beasley talk when we come back. Stick around, you're tuning into The Hook on Woodward Sports Network. Welcome to the Call Sam Chopper Shop, where you can win a custom built chopper while helping our veterans at the same time. Watch as the Bad Pig Custom Team turns this bike into a one-of-a-kind classic chopper. And when it's finished, we'll be donating the bike to Volunteers of America Michigan to raffle off in support of our vets. A great cause to give back to those who've given so much. Watch for Call Sam Chopper Shop episodes on our social media channels and get your raffle ticket today at callsam.com backslash chopper shop. You don't form the ball at work. Hey, drug bill, Sean Belizean. See you guys next weekend. Hmm. Thanks, Mike. Poor Bell Soft. Wait till it comes to New Zealand. Swore that out. 
<laughs> Welcome back to The Hook on Woodward Sports Network, Detroit's all-digital sports network. Uh, Live from my bookie studios, it is Lucky Thursday, they got their own July show off the air. 29th. I mean, it really is. I feel like the, the, the show between the breaks is the one people need that's to the be one, watching. That's probably the my, better show. No question. My goodness. There's no doubt about it. My goodness. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Bular Lastra <laughs> with D Mac and Tom Mazaway. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Fish, I have to explain to you. Fish is in a box. Alex is in a box. Then we have Arden, one lazy boy. And I got Andrew and the other lazy boy. We're hearing the commercials in our headphones. We're trying to talk to each other. Uh, you know, just in between the break, we got 30 seconds for crying out loud. These guys are having their own freaking show. <laughs> they yell at Fish is like, you want your mics up? Mics down. Alex is like, <laughs> this is what I hear from Alex. <laughs> I don't hear a damn thing. <laughs> I'll be honest, I have no idea why I'm behind glass. <laughs> if this glass wasn't here, we would have so many, so much less problems. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's unbelievable. Hey, you guys notice the new TV working? <laughs> yeah. Can you put on NBC, new... by the way? We're watching CBC. TV. has been looking at we the TV problems. the whole show. Can we? All right, guys. All Wait, right, what, guys. What, what, what's on CBC right now? They have gymnastics uh, on. Gymnastics. I already know who won. Okay, Put well, the, it's the same on. on NBC. They're showing you the same He just wants somebody stuff. to find replays Look, of beach volleyball. Look, is it's what 5 he wants. in the morning over there right now. They gotta it be, is 5 they, in the morning. They gotta be playing something. No. Well, they're not playing anything they're live. Playing they're all sleeping. <laughs> okay, so. fine. All right, Tom Asway, <laughs> let's get to your sports update. Brought to you by mybookie.ag, mybookie.com. Use the promo code Woodward. They'll match your first deposit. Halfway up to $1,000, you can bet the Olympics. Yes, you can bet the Olympics. And you can bet baseball because right now there's some wild games going on. But top of the line, top news, of course, Kate Cunningham and the Pistons on the clock. NBA draft night tonight from Brooklyn. Woj has already said it. The Pistons will select Cade Cunningham. He's got the next two picks locked in as well. How about that? Come hang with the WSN crew tonight at the Pistons Draft Watch Party at Imagine Royal Oak starting at 7.30. Free of charge, by the way. So uh, make sure you show up there and have some fun with the guys. Pistons, of course, trying to get them going. Uh, starting five next year could be very interesting. Let's go to day two of training camp for the Lions today. They open up the preseason August 13th against Buffalo. The Jets' number one pick, Zach Wilson, he finally signs on the dotted line. What took so long? Four years, 35.1 mil, signing bonus of just under $23 million. Welcome to New York. His mom was on York. vacation. She yes. had to come back and, and His mommy sign. helped him sign <laughs> on the dotted line. I, I bless this kid, please. Tigers start a seven-game homestand today. The last place, Orioles in town for four. Casey Mize gets the ball. Mac, what are you going to be doing tonight? I'm going to be entertaining some of the young prospects. So the Wings are going to be down in the game. So uh, I'm going to be cheering on Casey Mize. Hopefully he can... Uh, Take care and go deep into the game. Hopefully, they extend his pitch count. You got Rosie with you tonight? Rosie's going to be there too, so I won't have to do much talking. Dave Rose. Mm -hmm. By the way, Tigers closing in on their third straight winning month. They're already at least going to go for 500. They'll beat the Orioles. They will have another winning month. They've only had one losing month, and it was April when they went 8 and 19, so they get off to that bad start. Otherwise, you know, they're playing better ball. Nationals and Phillies postponed yesterday. They're playing today a doubleheader. Let me get you some scores here. Braves on top of the Mets, 6-3. to three. That's a final. Yankees losing 14 to nothing. Garrett Cole was on the hill. The Rays still trounce him. The Royals, I made the White Sox my best bet today. Kansas City, 5. White Sox, nothing in the bottom of the 6. Cubs and Reds tied at 3. And the Nationals... It looks like they're going to go for the sweep of the Phillies in that doubleheader. They win 3-1. to one. They're up 7-1 to one in the fourth right now. Tokyo Olympics. No Simone Biles. No problem for USA Gymnastics. Suni Lee wins the gold in the women's all-around. She becomes the fifth straight American woman to claim the Olympic title. That's something. U.S. leads the medal count with 37. 13 of them gold. China second. Russia third. Japan followed by Australia. And that's it, guys. And gals. All right, guys, there you have it. When we come back, let's get to a little bit of Cole Beasley telling his side of the story. So stick around. You're tuning into the hook on Woodward Sports Network. Welcome to the newest Bridge Street Exchange, not only in downtown Fenton, now in the Somerset Collection. Located on the second level, south side, right next to Lululemon and Starbucks. This is where you can get all the hottest barware or men's grooming products or clothing or 
Oh, that's what you meant. <laughs> Don't forget they got some cool hats too and it's a lot of great local Michigan owned companies that you're supporting. And don't forget, all under three bucks. You're such a loser. <laughs> but for real, take advantage, 15% off if you come in here, tell Kevin that Woodward Sports sent you. Or stop. What's up guys, DMAC here. Made in Detroit, eight mile vodka. It's not the what, it is the who. 90 liter aerated carbon filtered, distilled for optimal quality control and taste. This is award sippers winning vodka. Pilar says that last night, her and Big Tone probably slammed about equivalent <laughs> to a bottle and a half. But what they did is they did it responsibly. So if you two want to be like Pilar and Big Tone, Go to any Meyer to buy 8 Mile Vodka. Or go to any uh, establishment and ask them for delicious 8 Mile Vodka. But if you do, like Pilar and Big Tone, drink responsibly. All right, guys. Welcome back to The Hook on Woodward Sports Network. Hold on. Fish. That's how the music comes in. Now start lowering it. Okay. There you go. All right. Go ahead, Pilar. All right. All right. Well, uh, so as media is now able to really talk to the players, Cole Beasley finally got a chance to clear the air, and this is what he had to say. Before we get started, I know a lot of you guys probably have a lot of questions about what has gone on in the past couple weeks um, between the players, the NFLPA, you know, the vaccine, all those issues. So um, out of respect for my teammates and coaches, uh, I wanted to kind of put something together so I could explain those things and get it out of the way. And then after that, just move on to football. If that's okay with you guys. All right. So is everybody ready? All right. All right. I wanted to start this off by saying I'm not anti or pro-vax. I'm pro-choice. With that being said, the issue at hand is... Information is being withheld from players in order for a player to be swayed in a direction he may not be comfortable with. When dealing with a player's health and safety, there should be complete transparency regarding information that is vital in the decision-making process. Without having all the proper information, a player can feel misguided and unsure about a very personal choice. It makes a player feel unprotected and gives concerns about future topics regarding health and our ability to make educated decisions. With regard to our overall safety, we have to know we are armed with full knowledge and understanding that those who are in a position to help us will always do that based on our individual situation. Some people may think that I'm being selfish in making this a me thing. It is all about the young players who don't have a voice and are reaching out to me every day because they're being told if they don't get vaxxed, they'll be cut. Agents are being told by teams if they have unvaccinated guys, they will not be given opportunities as of now to be seen in workouts. So once unvaxxed players get cut, they're losing a dream. They have worked their whole lives um, for over a vaccine that has proven to not keep people from contracting COVID, as we've seen. Every doctor I've gone to with questions begins every sentence with, from what we know now, which tells me we don't know enough. The NFLPA is working to have vaccinated players tested more frequently than what the NFL initially stated. Um, a lot of players got the vaccination with the idea that these rules were already set in stone, and they're not. It is common sense that if a vaxxed or unvaxxed player is tested less frequently, the likelihood of a player being pulled for COVID drops dramatically. In regard to player safety, I will conclude by saying we all want to be safe. For so many players around the NFL, safety does not solely mean avoiding the COVID virus. Our health is the now and years beyond, which we are trying to protect with our personal choice while doing all the things we did in our protocol during a very successful 2020 NFL season. Uh, that's that's kind of where the issue has been for me um, this whole time, and that's how I want to, you know, end it right there. Um, there are some players already stepping up uh, and guys that didn't want to get the vaccine that are now, Mac. Well, it, the thing is you're hearing is truth. It's don't lead into right or wrong or to what the end goal right. is. Is that let just listen to what he's saying, and, and that's called Beasley's truth. Now, another one is, is for the Lions, the offensive lineman, Taylor Decker, yep. who had come out uh, before and said, don't ask me, but I'm not going to get it or whatever. Well, he's at training camp, and he said he got vaccinated, yep. and he really didn't want to 
explain to it, but but why? But answered that question. I think it's convenience now for these players. That, well, I think it's more convenience, yeah. and I think you know when you make it not just about you, it's about your teammates, and it's about taking away different liberties and stuff. And um, so, uh, but again, everybody like Cole Beasley, you have to respect the fact that that that's his truth, whether you agree with it or you don't agree with it, and. Uh, you know, it, it, I, I would think that I said yesterday the NFL's really made this their their stance and it's going to force more mm-hmm. guys than not. And at the end of the day, they'll probably be 95, if not yeah. more, percent of uh, people that are employed by the NFL that'll be. I hear it's 80% nice. percent now. But I. I but at, I, in Detroit? No. All over. Oh, all over. I was yeah. going to say, I know that um, as of Wednesday, Dan Campbell had said that more. Then 80% of players yeah. had been vaccinated for the Lions. So I, I think that now that you hear Cole Beasley able to speak outside of just tweets, right? It's very clear that his problem isn't with the vaccine or not the vaccine. It's more of the NFL PA and the information. He's just well, wanting to gather up, information. Clark, everything that, to... When this stuff comes up, the thing that goes into my ear is you saying the emergency it's not moved off Mm -hmm. the emergency and i think that's the hang up with a lot of people is that once it's fca fda fda compliant or approved then i think that you'll see more people and then it won't be as much of a uh, uh as much of a conversation what you said Cole Beasley right there, he said, when I talk to doctors, they say, from what we know now, which, you know, then that's right. his words, and right. that's where he's coming from. So I and think he, it's more the comfortability, the, the more time goes on. and and Absolutely. And I think he said, like, he came out in the very beginning. He said, I'm not pro-vaccine, I'm not anti-vaccine, I'm pro-choice. And I feel that that is what most people are right now. They just, they want that choice. People who are fighting it so much, they're saying just... Let me make that choice and don't don't meddle in my business. Just, but the people that I, the no, I noticed that the people that are vaccinated are very hard on the people that aren't vaccinated. You know, and very it, much. It's it's not a comfortable situation if you're not vaccinated. Right. It right. can't be a very comfortable situation. So right. I guess if you could live with it, that's that's one thing. But then again, that just goes back to people minding their business. Like if if I'm vaccinated and you're not cool that's on you right like i don't i don't care i'm not worried about you if you're vaccinated and i'm not then don't worry about me you know what i'm saying like yeah. I, I mean right now there's a, a new variant that's 20 percent of all the cases in in florida i just read are this new strand it's like newer than delta newer than delta. delta yeah it's like b one dot sixteen. Ooh, B one dot sixteen. Like, it's something nice. ridiculous. Like this thing is going to continue to mutate, and just like the flu bug, there's all absolutely. different type of flu strains. Absolutely, it's, and so do we have to name every freaking strain that's out there? They do, they do, because that's how they identify the differences and yeah. how you know the Delta variant was was stronger than just the regular COVID nineteen, and and then you know they're still saying if you're vaccinated hey still be careful like there it just comes down to vaccinated or not vaccinated just be cool people you just know what we should talk about out. you know what we should talk about next it's Cade Cunningham Give the vaccinated. people what they want is he vaccinated uh, Cade who cares? you know if he's vaccinated who, Andrew is he I have breaking news you do no. yeah don't tell me it's Red Sox <laughs> It's Padres. Padres. Okay, good. I like Padres. Mad um, Max. They're gonna they're acquiring Max Scherzer for sure. Yeah, it's Ken Roosevelt. Yes, I'm wow. very happy. That right means now. that means my American League pitcher Berrios from the Twins <laughs> won't go to San Diego. So I gotta yeah. I gotta protect my fantasy team. <laughs> Yeah, Nobody but how good is that? Mad I'm Max so with Padres wow. with Tatis. Yeah. I am Padres. so Got happy. The hoss. Right now. I wonder what the Nationals are gonna get. That's gonna cost. That's gonna ah! cost. <laughs> gonna cost them a lot. Maybe a Kraken. <laughs> Or two. Got to get cracking on it. Ah. I love it. Good update, Andrew. Keep yeah. us going and find out if Kate is uh, vaccinated. Who cares? I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, oh my God! Because Stay woke, yo. The pod. Our, our peeps, our peeps want to know. They don't. They want to talk to Kate. They want to talk Kate. Let's talk. I got Cade. Cade stuff coming up. All right, so stick around. Don't go anywhere. You're tuning into the hook on Cade Media Sports Network. <laughs> You know why realtors love using Hall Financial as a lender? Because of our commitment to speed and service. We have nearly 4,000 five-star reviews already. Call today, 248-308-5000, or go to callhallfirst.com. Your beds are up now. Exchange downtown Fenton. I'm trying to find me a shirt. Ooh, look at these swimming shorts. 
What are you doing over there, Stick? I'm trying to find Thanks, me a Alex. drink. Uh, ooh, look at these bonfire bitters. Ready for summer. Let's go. Whoops. Welcome back to The Hook on Woodward Sports Network. All right, guys, you are asking for more Cade Talk, and we are going to give you exactly what you want. The crowd is saying, we want Cade. <laughs> we want Cade. And we're going to give it to you, my friends. The Pistons are on the clock for Cade Cunningham. And General Manager Troy Weaver uh, over the last couple of days, you know, the media gets to talk to him, Rod Beard, and gets to write his column now because Woj said it's going to be official. Before Woj said it was official, the general manager, Troy Weaver, said, hey, we're still thinking about it. Said it from the onset that we're going to have a process and we're going to turn over every stone and that's what we're doing. I mean, uh, everybody's made the pick but us, um, but we're going to continue to do our work and turn over every stone and uh, we're going to make the selection based on um, restoring the Pistons and um, having uh, longevity here and making sure that um, this player is a go-forward player, whether it's whether they can contri contribute in game one or may take them half the season or even uh, the following season. So, uh, no, this is a long-term play. It's not a uh, get-it-right-at-the-moment play. They are on the clock. That's right. And don't forget about our watch party tonight at Imagine Royal Oak starting at 7.30. First come, first served. It's free to get in. Free but to get limited in. seating, limited standing room. And uh, the boys at uh, Woodward Sports, maybe Kennedy as well, will be there and uh, have a good time with us tonight. But that you just heard from the general manager, Troy Weaver, and he uses words like restore instead of rebuild. And then you hear Cade Cunningham when he does his interviews, and like you heard Rod Beard the other day, he says, well, if you listen to Cade, he kind of uses the same words that sure. Troy Weaver is using. Malika Andrews from ESPN caught up with Cade. You're going to see more of it tonight on ESPN, and you can listen on ESPN Radio as well. We had Mark Kestisher on. He will host that tonight starting at 7. Well, this is Cade Cunningham with Malika Andrews. You only worked out with one NBA team, the Detroit Pistons. What were your impressions of Detroit? Uh, I mean, I love Detroit. I think, you know, the facilities were big time. Mm. Um, the people throughout the organization were really good people. And I think they got a lot of things going for them in the future. So definitely a good organization. And if they take me, I'd definitely be happy to be in there. Did you get a chance to explore the city at all? What did you think of it? Yeah, I got to look around a little bit. I went to a, they took me to a Tigers game, yep. which was cool. So, um, yeah, I mean, Detroit was, was a great city. The people there were showing me love. So. My, my trip in general was just a good trip. Who are you most looking forward to sharing tomorrow night with? My daughter, for sure. She, I mean, she's not going to know what's going on in the moment, but I think, you know, down the line, she'll be able to look back on pictures and videos and stuff, and it'll be special for her. So, you know, to have her there, I think that'll be special for me as well. You mentioned that you only worked out with one team, Detroit. Mm -hmm. Detroit holds the number one pick. Why should you be the number one pick? I think, you know, just over the, the years, I feel like I've shown, you know, through my play and, and who I am off the court that, you know, I, I can come in and elevate, you know, the people around me and, and organizations, things like that. So, um, you know, like I said, I feel like my game is, has shown enough and, you know, I feel like I can come in and be an immediate impact and I think that's what you want from a number one pick. So fill in the blank for me. It is my welcome to the NBA moment. Pinch me. I know I am in the NBA when I am on the court playing against blank. Um, I say LeBron James. Mm. LeBron James, just because, I mean, he got a Space Jam movie now. So, <laughs> I mean, that's Space Jam. So, I mean, LeBron has been somebody I've been watching growing up. A lot of inspiration for me. I mean, he's been to the finals pretty much every year I can remember. So, uh, to be on the court with him, I mean, that's going to be special for sure. But... Definitely a good, you know, scale to see where I'm at, for sure. Well, I'll be wishing you a good night's rest. Thank Thanks. you so Thanks. much for your time. I, I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank you. Cade Cunningham and Malika Andrews of ESPN. Uh, we forget that he's just a kid. He is. He's played one year in college, and all of a sudden, he's our savior, Matt. 19 years old, and he has a kid. I know. 19, but he's our savior. He's 19. I know. Yeah, and, and, the, and the best part is you look around – that team where he's coming to is that it's a bunch of young guys that are going to grow together and learn together and seems a bit, you know the one thing is very mature and i love the fact that you know he appreciates 
you know, who we are. He sees Detroit. He sees mm-hmm. the fans. You know, he it's he's made for this team. So it's perfect. It's apropos that we get first overall pick, and he's going to bring us back to the promised yeah. land. Andrew, you feeling comfortable, Natty? You know, Woj said he's coming here. And what else did Woj say about the next two picks? Did you find out? Um, he said that the Rockets are looking at either Green or Mobley, but I expected them to take Jalen Green tonight. Yeah. yeah. The the big question tonight for the Pistons is will they move back up to the, into this draft? Yeah, that would be what nice. is he going to use those second round picks for? Right. You know, that's one of those things. You know, there's a lot of talk about Book Knight being 15th. Now he's a top five pick, top six pick. Yeah. So he, Troy Reaver is the mastermind, as I call him. He's a wizard. Yeah. That's my nickname. And he's going to, he is going to make a move tonight. I think one more move that's going to surprise us all. So do you but, remember who the number one pick was last year? Yeah, it was um, Anthony Edwards. Do you know what time they announced his name? Like an hour. 8-12. 8-12. 8-12. So when the draft started. In other words, it w- this wasn't the draft of last year. I mean, you, this guy is – this is like a top five locked and loaded yeah. type of draft. Last year, no one knew what the heck was going to happen. Right. And Golden State, you know, sitting in the catbird seat right now with, uh, with two – Top ten picks. They they have been in talk. Or top fifteen. They, they're a team to look for out tonight. You know they they've been a little bit of the Ben Simmons rush. I think Ben Simmons could be on the move tonight to the Warriors. Maybe I think they're going to make some moves. There's two first round picks. You know a team that's also been in a lot of talks is Indiana. Yeah. They've been in trade rumors and then the Spurs with Kuzma too. Hmm. The, the Lakers might make a move tonight. So the yeah. under over tonight. I looked it up today. Is six and a half. Um, Trace just Trace. in the wow. first yeah. round alone. We heard Mark Kestisher Whoa. earlier. He said like 60 players moved last year in yeah. the draft. So, you know, look for something exciting tonight. Uh, it's going to be great. Don't forget Woodward Sports Draft Party. Uh, watch it with them over at Imagine Royal Oak starting at 730. First come, first serve. It's free to get in. Yep. Uh, go meet the guys. And we'll be guys. broadcasting there, right? We will. We so will be broadcasting live. For any live. reason you can't make it out, for sure, make sure that you are checking us out. Here on Woodward Sport. I will actually be TDing that. You're going to do what? I'm going to be the TD for that. Are you? Doing what I'm going to be in the booth? Right now. Yeah. Nice. I don't even think we have a TD, booth, do you mean technical director? I will be technical director. Wow. That's awesome, man. I didn't know you had a nickname. That's awesome. I didn't awesome. know you had that's a name That's not my tag. nickname. That's my job yeah, title. Yeah, that's, that's his job title. It <laughs> says, Al May and the TD. It says producer, <laughs> but Alan, the main broadcasting engineer here, uh-huh. Uh, has been very frustrated because he has had to teach people that that is not a producer, that's a technical director. Correct. Thank he you, Alan, about that. for yeah. that, by the way. And uh, he mentioned Indiana. Andrew did. Where were you guys the night of the malice at the palace? Ron Artest against our Pistons at the palace. Check out what Netflix came out with or is coming up with. Some people have control over their emotions. I don't. I was trying to find any way to escape. I want the story out there. Like, what happened? Go frame by frame. A fight broke out between the Pacer team and the fans in the stands. People were trying to hurt me and others. There was a full-scale riot. I'm never talking about this shit again. Hmm. I mean, yes. Where were you, <laughs> well, November you, 19th of 2004? I can't wait. What's interesting, if you noticed, it's from the Indiana yes, Pacers from perspective. The Pacers. We're so not going to like it. So No, no. I'm sure <laughs> it, it'll put the story together. There's yeah. two right. sides to every story. Yeah, but our side's right. So our side is, is what? That uh, Pistons Ben Wallace attempted a layup, run our test, um, fouled him from behind. Wallace shoved our test, and then a fight broke out. Exactly, but then it the was fans. the cliff notes of what I feel happened on our. And the fans side. got involved. And the fans got that. involved. It got and wild. But Ron Artest is just wild. Like I mean, he back was, in his day, he, he was, was a firecracker. I mean, how many times did he thank his therapist after a game? Right. Yeah, I Ooh. I loved him. He was a St. John guy. I followed his career. I dug him. I loved his passion. I didn't like what happened that night, but the Pacers were a major force. On the Eastern Conference back then. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the Pistons had to get by them. The Tayshaun block, that gets them in. Without that, you don't see the 2004 Pistons in the finals. No. Yeah. Andrew, Andrew you remember you that? I remember I was like five. At That's the time. it? You were five? <laughs> yeah, you I was five the, years old. You weren't old. at that game? I was six. I was not at that game. I was five <laughs> years old that time that happened. But. Wow. I was 23. Hey, it's good. I remember I was in New Jersey at the time. I don't know what, why I was there. I think I was there for a. a, a 
birthday party or something. But I, I watched it, and I was so mad at myself for not being home and being at that and game. And watching this. No, oh being at gosh. that damn game. I would love oh, to have yeah, been yeah. at that game. Where were you, Mac? I don't know. He don't remember. <laughs> playing somewhere. <laughs> he was doing something. We he was doing something night. with somebody. I think we were playing that night. I think he was so beat, we didn't see it until the replays. Mm. You know, on ESPN that night. I think we were in Dallas or something. Um, Andrew, what do you have for us? That soccer is going to have both Pistons and Pacers players on it. Yeah, yeah never, I would they, imagine that. You they have never, to have both sides of the they story. They haven't announced who Pistons even offer to be on that documentary. We have no idea. Absolutely no idea. They haven't like, leaked that much about it. All they said was, we're going to have the trailer, the little trailer with the Pacer players, which I, I thought they should have had some Pistons players in there in that we'll trailer. We'll see. For sure. August yeah. 10th. It's August coming 10th up. On Netflix. on Netflix. If you don't have it, uh, ask Fish. He'll give you the password. <laughs> Fish, see if you can Google where the Red Wings were playing on. What was the date again? I will do that right now. It was now. Um, uh, November 19th, 2004. November 19th, 2004. Coming right yeah. out. D- if DMAG is right about playing in Dallas, that's pretty impressive. That would be impressive. 19th? Oh, yeah. Okay, 2004. 2004. Oh, see what Ducks? day that was. Huh? Yeah. They were in Anaheim? Sorry. Oh. I knew it was the West Coast. Good job, Matt. Not, Thanks. Not bad. I'm proud of you. Who I, I knew I watched. I knew we watched it Wait, after, the, after off, the game. Please. The mic is on. The game was canceled. What? Oh. No, the highlights. Or our, what game? What are you talking about? Was that game canceled? Wait, what? Andrew, you're giving us false info? <laughs> no. Wait, wait, you guys got to That's fi- what happens when, you, when you ask somebody to Google some, last something second. Real, last second. You're going to take the first thing. We had a game thing. canceled in San Jose because of a flood. Anyway, yeah. we'll find out yeah, about we'll it. We'll, we'll get out, back to you, folks. It'll be it'll be a great great thing to watch. No you know, question. And look, it's one of those things. Of, what are you going to watch right now? You know, oh, the Olympics. Said, November nineteenth. Oh, oh, that's oh, first three. Oilers. Three, four to three Oilers. Okay. In the shootout. So I remember. So it was TSN. Did uh, I mean, did Max score? Uh, Draper scored. Drapes. Yeah, but we lost. Way to go, Drake. <laughs> it's like Stevie's goal and Who's against in the St. Louis. We didn't win the cup. Who, Who was, was in the in, net? Uh, let me see. The let box. me see. Wait, what year? It was 2006, oh, right? No, no. 2004. Oh, oh, four. Okay. oh for God's sake. Nice job, man. <laughs> Look at all your minions. Oh, they are. They are. Minions. Minions. I know. I know. These idiots keep giving me 03, 04. I want 04, 05. Oh, okay. I don't think they were playing. Let, let's, who cares? All right, guys. Mac was somewhere oh, else. <laughs> it might have been the Laco. Oh, it might have been. Oh, you know what? You're right. Back in 2004, mm. right? Yeah, you're right. That's when uh, you I was Grinder. So I had no you're idea. Right. Maybe we, I watched in the replay months later. You are is right. Is Grinder getting back together, by Grindr the way? Grinder is back together, Mass. Okay, good. <laughs> Grinder will be out in about. When do you play? Hold on. They have some idiot on eBay that has Detroit Red Wings 2004-05 four unused season tickets for all 46 games. <laughs> there you go. You so can get it for 19.95 on eBay. They didn't play. So he's yeah, got it was all canceled. the tickets. There you yes. go. Mac, you want those? Why? It's 20 bucks only. <laughs> So, so go, hey, hi, put them in your man cave, man. You know what? Tammy should have those. <laughs> well, there you go. Tammy, for Tammy. Yeah, it, Tammy, it, get a, t- it, I haven't it, seen Tammy. It has chair, a full. Oh, oh, can I find November 19? What was November 19? Uh, they were, I believe it was uh, at Anaheim. I said they should have played Anaheim. So, we so it was they should have it. It was at Anaheim, Friday, but I imagine they postponed night. it. Hey, listen. You know, so good job, Andrew. Matter. We are. It don't matter. We're way <laughs> off. So it was, it was a Friday night in 2004. I was probably at a fun party or something. You probably were. It was a were. Friday night. You probably were. But if they were <laughs> playing, they were at Anaheim. And we found right. out there's some idiot on eBay selling uh, his his tickets. Which Maz was having are grilled stupid. cheese. I love grilled cheese. Uh, you know why they won't work, Fish? Because can't get into the Joe anymore. All right, guys. Well, where were mm. you on November 19th, 2004, when that huge brawl broke out at the palace? Let us know on our social media at Woodward Sports. Or, hey, was give Kate us a there? call. 313-552-6322. Kate was like two. He was everywhere. Kate's been everywhere. He was vaccinated back then. Probably. Oh, my gosh. Probably. All right, guys. Hey, when we come back, so ESPN got caught with their hands in the Big Ten cookie jar. Big 12. Mm. Uh, oh, Big 12, yes. Well, there it What's should 10, be. 12? I think, well, now, now the Big 12 just lost two teams, so yeah. I'm thinking 10, but, you're right. But there's only one Good say, but you're right. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. ESPN, uh, naughty on you. Yep, shame, shame, shame. All right, go. All right.
Andrew, before we I hit the break, ha- I have some news. Oh, okay. God. <laughs> Tell them. The Warriors were offered oh. Andrew Wigan, Wigan, Wiggins, James Wiseman, the 7 and 14 pick, two first round picks for Ben Simmons. The Sixers offer that. The Warriors declined the offer. Yeah, I, I would too. So yeah, it's already it's already starting. Yeah. Way yep. That's way too much. Way too much. Warriors offered, yep. So. All right. We'll get more with Andrew. Warriors uh, when we offered? Come back. The Sixers I offered the Sixers it. Sixers, Sixers offered, offered it. That. Warriors just said nope. Tell them we'll give them a second round pick for him. Yeah. Yeah, he'll How start finagling that deal. Give two second round. Give them all all a second right, round guys. Picks. So when we come back, let's talk about ESPN naughty naughty. Trying to interfere with what's going on in the Big 12. So nobody go anywhere. You are tuning in to The Hook on Woodward Sports Network. Would you like to win a custom-built chopper while helping our veterans at the same time? Then watch as we turn this bike into a -a one-of-a-kind classic chopper. Watch the Call Sam Chopper Shop on our social media channels and get your raffle ticket today at callsam.com backslash chopper shop. Morning, Art. Morning, DMAC. Hey guys, it's Maz for our friends at PAM, the Public Adjusters of Michigan. are giving you a chance to win a twosome in the third annual Darren McCarty Grind Time Family Outing. Charity Golf <laughs> Outing. On August the 6th at the Links of Novi. The event is totally sold out. The only way to get in is to win it right here. To enter for your chance, go to woodwardsports.com. Look for the PAM logo to register. PAM represents the insured for property insurance claims. Homeowners, commercial property, fire, wind, and smoke. They get you the money. They can do all the work for you. Why wouldn't you have them do it? Here's your website. Callpamfirst.com. Callpamfirst.com. Make sure you go to woodwardsports.com. Register for your chance to win a twosome to the Darren McCarty Family outing. <laughs> brought to you by... Third annual. Brought to you by Grind Time. Yes. Go ahead, Mac. What else you got on it? No, it's going to be fun. That's, That's it? Friday. Fun? Okay. That's it. Fun. That's all you Shit want. Good times. Good times. Good times. Good times. Get there. Get, get on there right now. Go to woodwardsports.com. Look for that Pam logo to register in golf with D-Mac. He's very fun. When he's sleeping. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back to The Hook on Woodward Sports Network. So let's talk a little bit about what is going on with ESPN and the Big 12. So the Big 12 sends ESPN a cease and desist letter to stop asking other conferences. Is it deceased to- or desist? Cease and desist. <laughs> what did I- I'm joking. Well, whatever. I'm joking. Okay. <laughs> you know how I pick on you freaking English? Come well, on. okay. Well, okay. whatever, right? Okay. A letter to stop... <laughs> Stop asking harassing. other conferences to pick the Big 12 over. This, if, if the Big 12 was to be over, no more Big 12, ESPN saves $1.06 billion. Oh, with, with a B. B. With a B. Mm. Billion. If the Big dollars. 12 folds, ESPN is rich. Er. And that's what they've been doing, Mac. And uh, they got caught by the Big 12 commissioner who put out a letter. And let's put that letter up. I'll read it to you guys. I'll try to paraphrase for you. It, uh, Dear Burke Magnus, that's ESPN Incorporated, delivered from the Big 12. It's come to my direct attention that ESPN, the current business partner of the Big 12 conference, has taken certain actions that are intended to not only harm the Big 12, but to result in financial benefits for ESPN. Setting aside ESPN's potential involvement in the recent announcement in the University of Texas, University of Oklahoma, that they intend to leave the Big 12 Conference in 2025, which is going to be quicker than that, trust me. I am aware that ESPN has been actively engaged in discussions with at least one other conference regarding that conference, including additional members of the Big 12 and to leave the Big 12 Conference, paraphrase it, to the end, the Big 12 Conference reserves and will enforce all of its rights under the Grant of Rights Agreement and the Telecast Agreement, and we will pursue this to the full extent of the law, the Big 12 Conference, with your written assurance that such actions will immediately cease and desist by noon central time, July 29th, 2021. Commissioner Robert A. Bowlesley II. That was written to the Big 12. So uh, ESPN is saying it's bull. We're not apologizing. We didn't do that. 
Who do you believe, Mac? Cat. <laughs> I don't know. There's a billion dollars to to believe that there's shenanigans going on. It's always follow the money. So I mean, you know, you hear it out there. So the fact I'm more surprised or impressed that that the conference steps up and calls out ESPN, right? You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So um, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Here's who would be left once Oklahoma and Texas leave: Oklahoma State, Baylor. Texas Tech, Iowa State, West Virginia. Let's see who else. Who am I missing here? Oh, Kansas and TCU. Those would be the teams remaining in the Big 12. Nobody gives a damn about the Big 12 championship game with those teams involved, especially in football. I know Baylor played awesome. They're the national champions in basketball. We congratulate them on that. But Baylor football hasn't really been great. I know Robert Griffin uh, did well for them. They've, they've been better than you usually been. But, you know, these other teams, not a chance. But Oklahoma State, just to let you know, just now put Barry Sanders in their ring of honor. Oh, my god! Just now. I mean, what took so long? Oh, my god! Oklahoma State. I, don't, I just don't, I don't understand. Anyway, the conference is it's, it's nothing without Oklahoma and Texas. So do you think, though, Tom, that at this point they're just going to stick to 10 teams, which they could just play with 10 well, teams? Year, or do you well, think that they're going to go out and try to recruit Well, right now they have their full teams. They have everybody. This mm-hmm. year they all have to play, Oklahoma right. and Texas included. Next year this conference will be gone. And the other teams will be elsewhere. You think the entire elsewhere. conference yes. is going to be gone? It you will think be gone. it's going to completely Not dismantle? A question. Not a question about it. You don't it. think that they recruit somebody and say, no. hey, do you want to win a title? Because you no. can come. You, you brought up a funny part. I said, Michigan <laughs> should go over there. Michigan should go over there. <laughs> they can compete win a at least. <laughs> we want a championship. <laughs> they can't win the Big Ten, but they we can win the Little Ten. The Little um, Ten. <laughs> Andrew, what do you have for us? Matt, I have a question for you. Yeah. Which teams then, like the Big 12 teams, that are, that are not going to leave, like, Iowa State, Kansas, Baylor, Baylor. Which Texas conference Tech. do you think they're going to go? Oh, they're going to go all over the place. Everywhere. They're going to SEC will ten. pick another couple. ACC, uh, of course, the Pac-12 could still be Get involved. Baylor. The Big Ten could be involved. The Big Ten supposedly had their eyes. I don't know why, but on Kansas and Iowa State. I heard Oklahoma State too. Oklahoma State. I think Oklahoma State would go with Oklahoma to stay with them. It's like. You know, Texas and Texas A&M would go together. Yeah, I've got I, one of those funny videos for you guys. Remember last week I showed you that funny video, the takeoff from the Step Brothers movie, Mac? Do you remember that yeah. with the Big 12? Uh, here's one again. The Internet wins big again. Uh, check this one out. <laughs> Just in case, oh just in case gosh. that music is uh, not loud, we're gonna just let you keep looking at it. They're, they're partying. This is so good. Look, look at Texas and Oklahoma. Look at poor Texas A&M on the couch. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, look at Alabama and LSU. Look at them. <laughs> look, they're just abusing poor A&M. Look. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god look at that oh uh, my god uh, what so movie is this wrong. from <laughs> what There's, movie is that um bradley cooper hustle. american hustle is it it's american such hustle? an amazing movie yes. too oh. oh my god it's so good that's great stuff man uh, oh my uh, the, goodness, the internet remains funny. undefeated i mean for real though as always that as one always. is good so if you guys think that Next year, there's going to be no Big 12 conference. Why would ESPN allegedly try to well, that, that's mendle in this? Because that's why there's not going to be a Big 12. Oh, you think that ESPN yeah. is going to continue to of course. mendle in this? Of course. They have to. to save, it's a billion. A it's billion. not a meh. It's they're, a they're buh. They're paying a B to watch a thousand million. Baylor, Texas Tech, Iowa State, West Virginia. No. You gotta break no, them up. Absolutely, you gotta absolutely break them up. Been. So there you go. You're up to date. All right, guys. Good stuff. Let us know what you guys thought. Let us know if you got a good chuckle out of that video at Woodward Sports. Oh, that's good stuff. Across the board. When we come back, we're gonna get to our NHL free agency update with DMAC. Nobody go anywhere. You're tuning into the Hook on Woodward Sports Network. Do you know why realtors love using Hall Financial as a lender? 
because of our commitment to speed and service. We have nearly 4,000 five-star reviews already. Call today, 248-308-5000, or go to callhallfirst.com. Before he's been wearing this LeBron James jersey around the network. Bye! It's been falling down a lot. And you know, really, that's it. Dan Campbell is gonna be the man for the Lions. Don't you agree, Corey? Oh. I didn't even touch you! Welcome back to The Hook on Woodward Sports Network. All right, guys, you're wanting some NHL talk, and we're going to give it to you as we get to NHL free agency frenzy with DMAC. Absolutely. We got a couple uh, news uh, as of interest. Pius uh, Suter uh, from the Chicago Blackhawks, young uh, Swiss two-way forward. I wanted the other Suter. Yeah, not, not related to Pius all the brothers. Uh, signed for two years. Uh, with the Detroit Red Wings, uh, you might know him last year. He played for Chicago, had a hat trick against us um, at LCA. So that's a good sign. Sam Gagne re-signs, 14-year veteran. Why is that important? Because as you're building, you need that leadership. Um, and also Jordan Osterley, who is coming over from the Arizona um, the Arizona Coyotes. Coyotes. And uh, what's important about him? This kid's local. Dearborn Heights kid. Grew up watching Nick Lidstrom. And Darren McCarty, yeah, we get some sh shine on DMAC today, right? Personal shine. But what I want to focus on is we mentioned uh, we lost to Luke, but we got another one back. Who am I talking about? We all know Luke Len Denning uh, signed with Dallas. We're going to get to him in a minute. But uh, you might remember Luke Wickowski, the wit, who a couple years ago went uh, came from Tampa Bay. Well, he's uh, Holland. Uh, he's from Holland, Michigan. He's back in the mix, signed a two-year deal. So that gives some toughness, some up and down uh, with Grand Rapids and veteran leadership. That's a great sign and great for the room and stuff like that. But uh, the Detroit Red Wings did a great thing, and I uh, can't speak um, as highly uh, about Luke Lendenning as anybody else. He's just a character kid, Grand Rapids out of Michigan, heart and soul. And I think when you see the... Why don't they keep him? Money and it's time for because yeah. because younger guys showed early, right? So he's not going to be here when it when it changes and and guys like I said Rasmussen and Ice Time it's not there. Giovanni Smith the guys that they're going to use the Ice Time to be here uh, in a few years when it matters. So it's not because you don't want to have a guy like that. But here's here this is the Red Wings put this out. This is a some appreciation for Luke Lundenning, which is well deserved. I remember coming out of the jail and watching Steve Eisman play and, you know, the grind line when I was a kid. And to now be in that same locker room and be on the same ice is pretty special. Tradition of the Red Wings. I know they made him an that offer to it just, just wasn't enough money, obviously, but they kind of knew that, didn't they? Yeah, yeah no, and, and it's the opportunity. You know, what if Dallas, he took the hometown discount? What's that? What if he took the hometown discount? Would it have, how much would have changed? I think it's it's more of an opportunity to win. They're mm -hmm. not going to win in the next two years. Win a Stanley Cup, he's going to Dallas because he's probably only got a few years left. And it could be something they can go and come back. You know what I mean? If he still <laughs> wants to play, you go and try to get your cup and then come back because yeah. they're not ready now. You will have allowed some of the younger guys to develop. And, you know, it's it's the, it's the new NHL, Maz. Mm. It's yep. unfortunate. It's salary cap. Can't keep everybody it's sports. in. It's sports. Yeah, it is. It's sports. 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 It's business sometimes. I get it. Absolutely. I get it. All right, so let's have a little bit of fun. NFL GMs rank the quarterbacks. Let's get this up so you guys can take a look. This is from The Athletic. Mike Sando yep. puts that out. We're going to have to zoom in a little yeah, bit on that. How did I know you were going to say that? Well, then why didn't you just do it then, son? <laughs> 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 but you can see Jared Goff is in the left-hand column there. What number did Goff come in? 
19. He came in at 19. Much better than uh, Pro Football Focus Absolutely. of uh, 26 or 27. But uh, who's our – go ahead, read them up. Top five, obviously. Top, well, okay. Oh, I see it now. Aaron Rodgers, Mahomes, Brady, Russell Wilson, and Deshaun Watson round out the top five. All right. Honorable Not mention, too shabby. Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, and Matthew Stafford. Stafford comes in at number seven. Yeah. I love that they put Justin Herbert in there, young guy with so much potential. They made this graphic really confusing because it says Aaron Rodgers won and Patrick Mahomes won. I felt and then it, they're like does staggered. that mean they're is tied? tied? Yeah. But yeah, but th- it seems like there's like Lamar, two different lists. But there's no two there, if you notice. One, one, three. Well, couple seven. Right. Lamar one, Jackson and Matt Stafford yeah. the same. Yeah. Now, uh, if you didn't hear, Lamar Jackson tested positive for COVID. So he's sitting out for a while now, and I'm not sure if he's vaccinated or not. Obviously, if you're not vaccinated, I think it's a minimum of two weeks that you sit out, and we'll have to find out uh, there. But these things are going to start happening, and uh, that's why you need a good backup quarterback. Did um, Was Dak Prescott on that list? Yeah. he was, And he's I hurt. Just, yeah, he just He's got a shoulder his injury. Sh- his Prescott's throwing shoulder nine. injury. Yeah. That's not good. No, it's not. He's got a bad, bad wheel, and now he's got a bad shoulder. And, that's... and it's his birthday today. The Aww. Cowboys. Happy birthday, Dak. Tweeted it happy is, birthday it is, to Quebec. It is his birthday, and uh, did you know Dak is not his name? What's his name? Do you know what his name is? I don't. You do not Terrence. know what his name is? His name is Rain Dakota Prescott. Rain Dakota. So Rain. his name is Spelled Wayne. R-A-Y-N-E. Wayne. Yeah, so his name is cool. Wayne Prescott. His full name is Wayne Dakota Prescott. They're using his middle name it's as It's a Dak. cool name. I, that is a really awesome name. And I guess that's where you get Dak from, Dakota. Dakota, yeah. Dude, but that's sweet. They should call them Wayne. Why don't they call well, him Wayne? Well, that's his choice. Well, <laughs> you can call him Rain when he starts making... When he makes it rain. When he well, makes it rain. Right. He, he made it not rain. making it yeah. rain. He made it He's rain. He's the highest paid guy in the <laughs> I would say, yeah, he makes it rain financially, but I'm saying, I'm saying making it rain with Super Bowl rings. Well, that's that's what I'm talking about. Playoffs first, right? I know, I know. Baby, Baby steps. steps. Baby steps. All right, so happy birthday to Dak Prescott, and hopefully that shoulder injury to his throwing shoulder will be okay. We are all rooting for him to have a comeback season after that terrible injury that he suffered last year. Um, all right, guys, so let's get to a little bit of me gusta or no me gusta. You guys know how to play along on our social media, at Woodward Sports. Or, hey, if you feel very passionate about this, give us a call. 313-552-6322 is our number. Uh, you can hear Fish's lovely voice, and then he will bring you on to us. But, hey, guys, make sure you at least play on our social media, I at Woodward one. Sports, Four. across the board. So if you like the statement I'm about to say, you say me gusta. If you do not like it, then just say no me gusta. And, of course, your, your reasons why are always welcome. Yes, Fish. Alex, you have, uh, you have one for us today? Yeah, well, we can have two no me gusta, me gustas. My first one is, do you guys think that Tom Brady's speed rating in Madden <laughs> should be higher? <laughs> <laughs> what is this speed rating? This is great. Oh All right, TV. My gosh. This is the chance to this increase your speed. There's Ultra right. Cinco. Let's go. <laughs> it's on you. Whenever you're ready. Let's get it. This is amazing. Gosh, he cares so much. <laughs> <laughs> I get it? <laughs> Sorry, man. Oh, oh my God, this is amazing. Come on, man. Oh, my gosh. When did that commercial drop? Just today. today. Yeah. Oh, my God. That is so funny. I think they nailed it. I think yeah, they nailed it. Matt, you even got a lot. You even got a laugh. You got to give a little. He makes me laugh now. I got to admit. He makes fun of himself. He's got a funny. really great personality. Between the video of him throwing the, the footballs to, well, I was to the so jugs real. machine and, it, and this, you got to tip your cap to his production team. And oh, his, it's funny. His I wish I guys. had a production team like that. Yeah. That would be so nice. so funny. Yeah, you got you know? me, Mac. You got a TD. No, you're a technical director. Yeah, you got a TD. Well, I can be both. Well, Ooh, I, oh, look at him. Let's He's work asking. on the, hey, let's try to hone in one skill at a time. Oh, my oh, goodness. Oh, boy. Ouch. <laughs> Wait, he, was better, he was better than easy on that board on the first day. Wait. Oh, I know. Yes. Oh. But we're not even talking about that. <laughs> but but he's, he's, a, he's, he's, he's a showman, though. He's, he's, he's you know, in he's front of the mic. Guy. Yes. He definitely didn't like it in there. 
Well, and look, easy. Wow. <laughs> you guys were very difficult on How many easy comments too. can you make on easy, easy man? Very difficult on himself. He's, he's, more? he's a son of mine as well. Easy. Okay. How many sons do you have? You have like seven of them? A bunch of them, yeah. <laughs> well, he's got three These guys are the sons daughters, I never so had. He needs to make but up can, some sons. But can, can you name them? Of course I could. Okay, <laughs> how many sons you do you have? I've got uh, Alex, Kay. Andrew, yep. like how Jeff, doing. Easy, Ben. Wow. Uh, Anthony. He barely wow, knows his name. <laughs> uh, Art. Of course. <laughs> by the way, I, by the way, I said to name your sons, not the whole entire Woodward Sports Crew. They're all. Oh. They're, they're my sons. I, Mikey, Justin, TikTok. Mikey TikTok. Mikey TikTok. Oh, Mikey TikTok. I got nine, at least yeah. nine sons here, at Holy least. Ooh, busy man. Jeez. And Kennedy's my daughter, extra daughter. Okay. Aww. Um. All right. So let's get to a real me gusta or no me gusta. Uh, Cade Cunningham will make the Pistons playoff contenders next year. Me gusta or no me gusta? D-Mac, you first. I'm going to go with me gusta because they incorporated this new play-in game. So I don't know if they can make it eighth, but I do believe they might be able to get ninth or tenth into that playoff round. And they're going to be a team. You heard it um, earlier today when we had Mark Kestershire on, the voice, the ESPN NBA radio play-by-play that you'll be able to listen to tonight doing the draft. You heard what he said. Is that they're going to be like a – he sees them being like Atlanta. That tells me hard to play against. You don't want to play against them. So uh, he makes them a better team, and I think he, he, something that makes some noise. So make All Usta. Right. Um, I don't know if, if it's a uh, for sure thing that they're going to bring back the play-in games. I think that it will. No, it is. No, it 100% it, it is. is a it thing, is. yes. 100%? Yeah. Okay, because it was a possible permanent uh, Next year feature. for sure. Yep. All right. I like it. I love it. All right. Um, I agree. Tom. Me gusta. I, I think they, well, they would they win last year, Anthony? I mean, uh, Andrew, 20 games? 20 games. Okay, they could yeah. win 30 next year. What's 30 get you in the East? Does 30 get you near the playoffs? No. There'll be a lot what of was the, What was the eighth team last year? 19. 34 wins. Okay, so that gets you close. Yeah, but, but they, uh, they had I, only 73 this games. Is, this is, they didn't have all 82. They so, have 82 so next they year. They have 82 this next year. Is, so add five wins to that total. Yeah. I say they could be a contender. I don't think they'll make the playoffs. I'm with Mac. I think they'll play hard like we think our Lions are going to play hard. Yes, he makes them a contender to maybe get in as a bubble team. All right, Alex. Te gusta o no te gusta? A resounding me gusta. As soon as we won the lottery, I was telling all my friends, Pistons playoffs 2023. And I may even go as far as saying that uh, Troy Weaver is going to pull some magic here and work his way back into the first round tonight after we take Cade Cunningham, of course. And this rebuild O-M-G. is going to happen a lot faster than uh, O-M-G. May, many This may poor kid has got a lot of pressure on his shoulders from O-M-G. us. O-M-G. He does. If he only knew how hungry this fan base is right now to be mm-hmm. something, to, ah! be, to be relevant. Yes. All but, right, Andrew, te gusta or no te gusta? I think no me gusta. I think they're going to be in a play-in game. But they, they're going to, like, I think Jalen Rose said it best today. They are the Charlotte Hornets next year. They're a 10th seed or a 9th seed, and they'll probably get knocked out of the play-in. I think he's going to have to get an even better player than Cade in order to make the playoffs. Again, with the rise of the Sixers, the Nets, and those bottom half teams, Atlanta, yeah. Miami. Oh, by the way, Boston, the world champions. The world champion box. <laughs> I see the Bulls making moves yeah. to get better. Yeah. I think the Bulls are going to play in team next year. I think the Hornets are going to be better All next right, year. All right, I'm done. I'm no me gusta. Yeah. He, turned, he, yeah. he, got me, he talked me into it. They're just. But don't you feel like, I mean, I feel like now that I know for for fact that the plans are coming back, the, that the, they are, it, it could kind of be the Cinderella story. They're going to be a playing team, but I think they're going to be, like, in the mix for the AC. They'll be battling. But I think unless they get, like, a big, big-time player, I, I just can't, I can't see them just making past a ninth seed next year. All right. The East is going to be loaded. And with these moves that are about to happen tonight in the next, next couple weeks, who knows what the league's going to be like. Yeah. All right. Uh, Fish, te gusta or no te gusta? Uh, I am also saying no me gusta, but... Uh, I think that the Pistons have a possibility to go to the playoffs next year, but it may not necessarily all be on Cade Cunningham. So right. no me gusta for the question because the question was about Cade. 
and I don't Cade. think Cade will. Uh, he may have a big part, but he won't have the biggest part. All right, well, I'm going to say me gusta. I actually think that with the plans, it, it shakes things up. So I'm going to say we're the Cinderella story next year, guys. So we will wait and see. All right, for a lightning round of who you like. DMAC, do you have anybody for tonight? Tigers. Tom Asaway. Kate Cunningham. Number Woo! one. Number one. All right, Put Alex. all your money on him. <laughs> Tigers. Andrew. Um, I'm wishing Annie Laser from Michigan. Good luck to the two breasts. She's going to be competing for a gold medal tonight. From Beverly Hills, from Michigan. From Beverly Hills, yeah. She slammed for Groves and she slammed for Auburn and I think somewhere else. She's So she's going to be in that mix. I wish her good luck. Yeah. Um, men's two back, Ryan Murphy, good luck. And then the Hunter Free, Timmis, is going to probably dominate again. And then good luck to Michael Andrews, too, tonight looking for his first medal these Olympics. Love those swimmers. All right, there what you have said. it. All right, who we like, Fish? Uh, I've got USA over Australia in women's rugby sevens, and you have USA over Netherlands in women's beach volleyball. Oh, so, man, that should be a good look bikini at battle. Look at <laughs> that. All right, guys, thanks so much for spending your afternoon with us. Big thanks to Mark Kestisher for joining us. Make sure that you're checking him out on social media at my Mark Kestisher. You can also check him out on ESPN NBA Radio. Uh, real quick, before we had to leave, Andrew, did you have any breaking news? No, not yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> he was raising his hands. There might be some breaking news. Follow us He's on social media. Him. Max Scherzer going Woodward to the Padres. Sports uh, for more breaking news throughout the day. All right, everybody. For Fish, for Andrew, for Alex, Tom Mazaway, and DMAC, I'm Pilar Lasher. We'll see everybody tomorrow. Enjoy the draft.